Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are In Washington, D.C. tonight, the weather better. And that's good. The Marlins and the National Series has been reduced to two games. The fish in game one used the power of Giancarlo Stanton and the right arm of Nathan Evaldi. Tonight they turn to Henderson Alvarez as the fish try to take two from the Nationals and stay in that second place spot. Hi everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton on Memorial Day. Everybody was talking about the red, white, and blue sleeve <laughs> and the long home run and the three hits of Giancarlo Stanton. But the Marlins are only going to go as far as their starting pitching. Nathan Avaldi was terrific, so was the bullpen. So tonight, Henderson Alvarez has got to match that. Rich, I wish I had an answer as to how Henderson Alvarez was going to pitch tonight because he's been off and on. And when he's been on, he's been absolutely tremendous. The problem is, most of the time when he's been on, it's been at home. He keeps the ball down, the breaking ball. We'll see him use that power changeup. But notice these pitches. They're down. They're knee high or lower. In his last outing, he kept the ball down against the Phillies. Seven shutout innings. On the road, he's had a tendency to get more pitches up. And when he gets pitches up, he gets hurt. Jason Worth hurt him earlier in the year. However, three earned runs or less in seven of his ten starts. So he's still been a solid man in the Marlins rotation. Here's the breakdown. The home starts. Look at the ERA, 185. On the road, the ERA at 488. So let's hope that Henderson Alvarez had some good work down to the bullpen before he got himself ready, and he keeps the ball down tonight. Rained out last night. Lineup's the same tonight, except the Nationals have made a pitching change. Yes, it is Ryan Zimmerman who goes up against Henderson Alvarez. We start it coming up in D.C. A big time battle.
Let's go places by AT&T Uverse TV. Check availability 1-800-PICK. AT&T rethink possible by Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. Cha-ching. And by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com. Washington, D.C. This time last night, lots of rain fell. The rain actually cleared around 8 o'clock. But tonight, uh, it looks like the Marlins and the Nationals are okay. Here's the Marlins starting lineup. Christian Yelich, Derek Dietrich at Nationals Park. A wrecking crew has been Giancarlo Stanton, Casey McGee, Garrett Jones, Jared Saltalamacchia, Marcelo Zuna, Adani Echeverria, and then Henderson Alvarez. And Pinch a Penny brings you the first pitch. And it's in there for a strike. Christian Yelich. And Zimmerman pounds in another strike. And the Marlins, of course, we're not going to see Zimmerman last night. They were scheduled to see him tonight. And so the Nationals decided to bring him out tonight. And why not? Zimmerman's fastball is fouled back and out of play. Well, he's certainly a guy the Marlins have seen before. He's five and three. He's had 13 previous starts against the Fish. Pretty good ERA at 384. And overall, just a solid, a very good pitcher. An all star last year. Of course, the Marlins opened against Tanner Roark on Monday with a 3 2 win. Yelich in the ball game was 0 for 4. The Thunder came from Stanton in the three spot and an RBI from McGee in the cleanup spot. But it was a well pitched game, both by Roark and Nathan Evaldi. And then Mike Dunn, A.J. Ramos, and Steve Ciszek brought it home for Miami. 2 and 2. Yelich Dietrich Stanton here in the first and Dietrich lifts one foul and out of play. The Marlins open this ball game at 27 and 25. The Nationals come into this game at 25 and 26. So the Marlins have a game and a half cushion over Washington. Miami sits in second place behind the Atlanta Braves. And Yelich a good at bat here, a 96 mile an hour fastball. He stays alive. It's been a little bit of a rough goal for Christian Yelich over the last week or so, but uh, you watch him during batting practice. He's working on some things, working with some things with Frank Menachino, and I saw him hit some balls really well in BP today. Breaking ball, a check swing, fielding cold breath. Is the umpire down at third base? Seth Buckminster is calling balls and strikes. Here's a side look. How many times, Rich, do we talk about a hitter if he has a good take? Sometimes that's even a, a nice tip off and a clue that things are starting to go in the right direction. Well, ninth pitch of the at bat. And a liner, left field line. It's tailing and it stays fair and into the corner. And Christian Yelich has got himself a double. Well, Tommy Hutton, you were right. A good batting practice, a good at bat, has led to a good result. Yeah, you know, he's he's put in the effort, he's put in the time, and he's also handled the, the last week pretty well. Yeah, you see him in the clubhouse. Sometimes he's a little down the way things aren't going uh, right for him with base hits, but he stayed with it, and you love to see the payoff. And that was a beautiful swing. That was a great at bat. Yelich now eight doubles to go with four triples and five homers. And here now is Dietrich. Dietrich faced Zimmerman early in the year and homered against him. In fact, the Marlins have seen Zimmerman twice. They rocked his world the first time they saw him. They didn't win the ball game, but they knocked him out in the second inning, the shortest start ever in Zimmerman's career. Look, Eric Jones has hit a home run against Zimmerman. Giancarlo Stanton has three in his career against Zimmerman. Ball and a strike. You see the season numbers. The next time he pitched against him, well, Zimmerman was back to his old self, and that was in Miami. It was a 9 2 win, seven innings, two runs, seven strikeouts, 
and just six hits. So in this ballpark, the Marlins jumped him. That was the game where the Marlins blew a 5 nothing lead and didn't win it. They lost 10-7. 2-1 coming to Dietrich. And a swing and a miss. In that game that uh, Zimmerman pitched in Miami, that was a game Garrett Jones homered against him. For a young hitter like Dietrich, the situational at bat here with a leadoff double. Now with a count two and two, it's just stay alive and make some good contact. And he pops it foul and out of play. This is really where you have to change your thinking as a hitter. Uh, you, you really have to do it even before you get to two strikes. Because you have that runner out at second base. It's the first inning. You'd love to get on the scoreboard right away. And it's so much easier if that number two hitter can get the runner over to third. Yelich has outstanding speed at second. To short, he's trying to get to third, and Yelich is in trouble, and he's out. A base running mistake by the Marlins cost them a runner in scoring position. And a nice play by the shortstop, Ian Desmond. Yeah, heads up on his part. There's the defense for the Nationals tonight with McLeod, Denard Span, and Worth in the outfield. You know the Desmonds at short. His double play partner is Kevin Franson. LaRoche and Rendon on the corners, Ramos behind the plate. Yeah, it's a it's a play. Maybe Yelich thought he could get there. Maybe he could get that ball behind him, but a heads up play and a nice play by the shortstop Ian Desmond. Now Stanton, so it puts Stanton at the plate with Dietrich at first. The other thing that the Nationals did a good job in getting Yelich quickly, and that kept Dietrich at first base. And a couple of quick strikes. It's 0 and 2. Tommy talked about the three home runs in 22 at bats, and that second pitch was way in. Stanton drives it into center field. That's a base hit. Doesn't matter in or out. Stanton right now locked in, and, and it came Tommy after a couple of frustrating games at home where. He looked like he was really searching for the ball. And and actually those games at home with Milwaukee, that's the way they pitched him. They threw a lot of stuff in. And it looked like Zimmerman was trying to do that, but certainly made a mistake 0-2 to leave a pitch hittable for Giancarlo with the count 0-2. So Casey McGee comes up. McGee in the opener had a double and an RBI single, lined out. He swung the bat quite well. Obviously in an RBI spot here and that's where he's thrived this year but a grounder to short Desmond gets it out there Franzen's relay is in time and just like that Jordan Zimmerman is out of the inning underway in D.C. and scoreless.
Nationals. And here come the Nationals, Matt Williams, Nationals, Denard Spann, Anthony Rendon, and Jason Worth in the uh, first three spots. Adam LaRoche is back off the DL for a couple of games and hitting well. Wilson Ramos, Ian Desmond, Kevin Franz, and Nate McLeod, and Jordan Zimmerman. Henderson Alvarez, our Chevron pitching matchup, and as Tommy documented, for Alvarez, the road has been kind of a, a coin flip for him this year. Yeah, and also, Rich, trying to beat the Nationals for the first time in his career. He's had five career starts against Washington. Not a bad ERA, 3.81, but he's 0-3. Alvarez with his unique first pitch. And it's a fastball, but it's letter high. And as you illustrated, that can be an issue, especially against a team like the Nationals. And as Denard Spann climbs in, Spann, Rendon, and Worth here in the first. Fastball, ground ball. Dietrich to his left, gets it, and fires the first in time to get the out. Boy, you look for some ground balls tonight from Henderson Alvarez. That's a good sign. Here's a look at the defense. Hopefully they'll handle those ground balls. Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton in the outfield. McGee, Echeverria, Dietrich, and Garrett Jones around the infield. Salt of Lamakia behind the plate. Now Anthony Rendon, who was 0 for 3 in game one of the series. This has now been reduced to a two-game series. Alvarez gets a strike. There's been no official word of the makeup date. Will it be a doubleheader at the end of September? Is there a date in between now and then that the Marlins and Nationals could meet and play? Rendon fouls it off out of play. Yeah there was a, a date being thrown around last night. August 4th the Marlins uh, have a home game on the third an off day on the fourth on their way to Pittsburgh and then Cincinnati but if you incorporate the games ahead of that and after it would it would mean 31 consecutive games. Off of Alvarez Dietrich has it and gets the out. I don't know what it hit. But Alvarez is crouched on the mound. Saltalabakia comes over to check. Here's another look. Boy, he reacts in a hurry, and rightfully so. I think it caught a, a bit of the leather, a little bit of the glove. Good reactions, and the deflection took it right to Dietrich. So just a, your simple one-four-three put out. He'll get an assist on the play. Yeah. But anyway, that hasn't been uh, made official, so it looks like probably when the Marlins come back in, in September, the final weekend of the season, it looks like maybe on that Friday would be a, a split doubleheader. All right, here is Worth, 51 games in, Worth sitting on five home runs and eight doubles right now. And Alvarez, a fastball for a strike. Worth in his career against Alvarez, two for nine. 96 mile an hour fastball. With all the, the stylish nature of Alvarez, sometimes you forget that he can touch 96, 97. That's the other thing we watch for because there are times uh, when when that also varies with the changeup, and the changeup then will be 88 to 90. But there are times we'll see his fastball maybe 93, 94. But uh, so far, a good sign tonight. Alvarez adjusting that uh, sleeve on his right arm. As usual, his shirt unbuttoned. And a bouncer foul wide of third. Alvarez is like the uh, modern day version of what was the character that John Travolta played in Saturday Night Fever? Who always had the shirt. Always had the shirt. Danny something. Yeah, Danny. Dan. Or Tony Monero, excuse me. It was Tony. In the center field, that's a base hit. And by the way, that reminds me, this is a carry overnight to get the fans involved on an email and Twitter Tuesday. So those of you that wanted to get your tweets and emails in last night, 
We'll do it tonight. And last night, one of the uh, themes that we had were underrated, underrated things in baseball, underrated things in life. So if you want to interact, come on aboard at Fox Marlins for Twitter. Or just email us at foxmarlins at gmail.com. Foxmarlins at gmail.com. Getting in early on all the fun was Chad, who said that Tommy's wardrobe selection very underrated for tonight. Okay, it go, all goes toward Preston. Just to getting us to step it up a little bit. I think Jeff Conine at home has stepped it up. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Now LaRoche, he certainly adds a dimension into the lineup for the Nationals. He bangs one into right field, a base hit. Worth will stop at second. LaRoche had a two run homer on Monday. And he singles here. Remember, we talked about location. Down away, and it's up a little bit middle. And it doesn't matter how hard you throw, it's been proven up here at the major league level. These guys can hit that pitch. And the Nationals really missed uh, Adam LaRoche when he was on the disabled list. Well, he hasn't missed yet, which is good news and it's bad news because he has been up. And if he's on the plate, too much guys will start really coming out of their shoes at that first pitch fastball. I think sometimes that uh, gets Nathan Evaldi in a little trouble too. Wilson Ramos doubled on Monday. Of course the Nationals still missing Bryce Harper and Ryan Zimmerman their third baseman and Captain Zimmerman is closer to returning. Has started a throwing program and has been cleared to, to start taking swings. Been working out a lot in left field. Harper, they're talking about all star break. Now Ryan Zimmerman in left field temporarily. That is one of the options that the Nationals have been mulling. Just to get some offense, the Nationals haven't had a whole lot of offense in left. They've got Nate McClout there. Tonight he's hitting 143. Sounds like the Dodgers are trying to convince Matt Kemp to adjust to left field, especially with Carl Crawford out now. Of course, the conversation last year with Zimmerman with the shoulder issues that he had was not moving to left field, but the possibility of him moving over to first base. So we saw him in left field two days ago. And now today, there he is, taking balls at first. Zimmerman had shoulder surgery before last season. Well, it, it seems like next year that, that would be the more likely scenario with Zimmerman at first base. 1-1 one, one pitch. Good because LaRoche's contract runs out this year and it, it just seems like that would be the more natural transition. The Nationals already have a good third baseman in Rendon. That's his natural position and they feel like even though he has slumped a bit he's going to be a solid major league hitter. But uh, it's tough to discount what LaRoche has meant to this ball club over the last two or three years. Especially two years ago when the Nationals won the East, LaRoche was incredibly slugged 5 10. He had 35 doubles and 33 homers, and of course, he's a gold glove caliber first baseman, and he actually won his first gold glove in that season of 2012. Little tapper back to the mound, and Alvarez fields it, flips it on over. 17 pitches, 15 strikes for Henderson Alvarez.
tonight. Jordan Zimmerman loosening up. Marlins return home, and on a Friday night, they take on the Braves. Three games set with Atlanta. The Marlins inching closer to the Braves. A game and a half at start of play tonight. If you bring your group to the Clevelander for happy hour, it starts at 5. And there's another fireworks show Friday night. So stay in your seats. The fireworks presented by Health Sun. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. Garrett Jones, Jared Saltalamacchia, and Marcel Ozuna. The emails and the tweets are coming in. Underrated is kind of the theme. And Jones takes a fastball down low from Zimmerman. And we throw out the first email. Jorge says Giancarlo being the fourth in National League All-Star voting is underrated. Exclamation point. Actually, it's not only underrated, but it's a... It's an outrage, Tommy. Yeah, Hunt. get the get the voting going. Let's go. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton should start that All-Star game, and in order for him to, to start that game, he has to get the fan votes in the top three. Well, get it out there. All right, Brian and Gerardo have questions as well. There's your All-Star voting. Here's how to vote. Go to Marlins.com. Vote the maximum 25 times. You'll get four Marlin tickets for just 20 bucks. So. It's quite easy if you're angry about it and you want to see this guy in the starting lineup, get online and vote. Marlins.com. We'll give you the leading vote getters here in a moment. It's Garrett Jones sitting on a 2 2 pitch. And he ropes one foul. Here are your leading vote getters in the National League. Well, there's your outfield in. The surprise to me is that Ryan Braun yes is third. Me but too. You know what? The Brewer Brewer fans turn out. They vote a lot, so maybe that isn't a surprise. Charlie Blackman has struggled lately. Andrew McCutcheon belongs in that outfield and belongs on the team. As the Roach steps on the bag at first. All right, Tommy. There, we've already had a few of these tweets and emails. Yes, Brian and uh, Gerardo want to know who is the most underrated Marlin. In history, Gerardo thinks Mike Lowell back in 2003. Yeah, you know, it's hard for for uh, for me to assess that because seeing him play every day with his defense and the the RBIs, the big RBIs, I never looked at, at Mikey as being underrated. Maybe around baseball, that would be the case. So, you fans out there, if you've got a suggestion, who's the most underrated Marlin in franchise history? How about a Devon White? So Delamacchia takes outside. By the way, in that Braves series, since the Marlins had a rainout, Marlins have adjusted their starting rotation. Randy Wolf will not make a start on Saturday. It'll be Tom Kohler. On Friday, Jacob Turner on Saturday, and Nathan Evaldi on Sunday. I believe it's uh, Julio Tehran, Urban Santana, and then Aaron Harang for the Braves. Yeah, there. Look at the uh, the matchups. Of course, tonight, Anderson Alvarez and Zimmerman. As you describe, there they are. I like the tweet from uh, Simeon. Is underrated a good vino while watching at Fox Marlins? I guess you'd have to check the wine spectator score on that <laughs> to be sure. Salto Lamacchia strikes out, and Zimmerman has two outs here in the second. Marcel Ozuna comes up. Ivan has this question. It's a good one. What made the front office promote Andrew Heaney to Triple A instead of the majors from Double A, like many teams have been known to do? And and the Marlins have done that also. But I think number one, they they know that Andrew Heaney needed a few more minor league starts, and they thought the transition, moving him up a level, he'd see some different type hitters, uh, would be good for him in Triple A. And so far, so good. He's had a couple of real nice starts in Triple A. 
That one popped foul. And out of reach. This is from Corey. I just love it when a man is on the phone and on kiss cam he denies the kiss and then the woman just spills beer all over. So kiss cam that was actually on my list. We were supposed to give five underrated things that we like about baseball or life. And kiss cam was one of yours. Yeah kiss cam he bumped the uh, kiss cam bumped the bucket off of the list so to speak the bucket the racing bucket in Atlanta. One two is in so I was asked give me five our producer said hey give me five things good pickoff move for a pitcher I think that's underrated speed in the outfield especially at Marlins Park good fielding first baseman because I work with one every night kiss cam and then apple pie. And you can take apple pie in, in many different directions. Alexi wants to know the most underrated Marlins starter. And I think you and I would agree, Tom Cole. Oh, modern day, yes. Yeah. Span ambles it and makes the catch. And Zimmerman settles into the second. Scoreless ball game in DC. Maybe that'll make the uh, fan photo, the AT&T fan photo. Just tweet your photo with the hashtag FL fan photo, and you might make the telecast like that couple did. Ian Desmond. And Henderson Alvarez misses outside. Desmond, Kevin Franzen, Nate McLeod in the second in D.C. Scoreless ball game, though both teams have a couple hits already. Desmond an 0 for 4, and he's seen his average dip below 240. There's that fastball. That's the location, Tommy, where the power change usually ends up, not the 96 mile an hour heater. Well, that's why he has both of those, and if he keeps both of those down, then you know he's going to have some success. Hey, talking about Desmond's average, uh, talking uh, briefly with Mike Rizzo. General manager of the uh, Nationals, and he just appreciates the fact that Desmond is out there every day. Said, yeah, he'd like to see the average a little higher, but you know what? You don't have to worry about not putting his name in the lineup. He's going to be out there every day. I think when you get to September, when the Marlins are back here at the end of September, I think Desmond's numbers will maybe not equal last year, but uh, get closer to it. He had 38 doubles, 20 homers. He slugged 453 last year. His slugging percentage this year is actually up at 412 because he has done some damage. 
with nine homers, six doubles. It hit Desmond and then bounced off a salt to Lamacchio. Here's an email, Tommy, from Dan. Kyle Jensen's been averaging 27 home runs a year for the last four years. He's hitting 275 with seven homers in AAA. Any chance he gets called up at some point, he is on the 40 man roster. Well, you get a look at uh, some of the, the nice players and what they've been doing. We talked about Andrew Heaney. Look at last night seven strikeouts, six shutout innings. Marisnik's been on fire in May, as has Kyle Jensen. That's good to see. And Justin Nicolino, another left hander, has been throwing the ball well. So a, a lot of good prospects, some good names to keep an eye on. Nicolino, the lefty, or one of the players that the Marlins picked up, along with Marisnik in that Toronto trade. And uh, you saw the whip at 1.20. Here's Franzen now. He can handle the bat. And you've got some speed with Desmond at first. Alvarez pitch lined in a right center field. Stanton and Ozuna at Stanton on a running catch. And he throws across his body and he gets him at first base. Double play. Giancarlo Stanton out comes Matt Williams and this will start the replay process. Yeah, this is bang bang. This is going to be pretty close and interesting to see the replay. But what a great effort by Giancarlo. You talk about a 240, 255 five pound man running in the other direction, then throwing across his body and getting something on the throw. You saw the exchange there between Jim Reynolds, the first base umpire. He's out. He is out. That front foot kind of popped up in the air before it got to the bag. Williams came out. His replay coach gave him the thumbs. Well, whatever their signal is, thumbs up, thumbs down. Doff the cap. Here's McLeod. And he sends one into center field. That's a base hit. Well, here's the double play again. Stan, remember, is moving to his right. Everything's going that direction. Now he kind of plants that back foot. Throws across his body, got enough on the throw, and also a perfect throw. One hop right to Garrett Jones. So you talk about athletic ability from a big man. You just saw it, Giancarlo Stan. Now Zimmerman, to answer the the question from Dan. I forgot the question. Well, does Jensen have a chance to get called up at some point this season? I think the answer is yes. The, the difference between this year and last year is the Marlins have position player depth, and they've got Jones producing at first, McGee producing at third, a healthy outfield, and I think that's the key word healthy. The Marlins really haven't had, other than Jose in the starting rotation, they haven't had a position player really go down with a big injury. And that might be the opportunity for a guy like Jensen to get up here as long as other guys are producing. I mean, the Marlins are having a fabulous offensive year right now. Well, and it's good to see the, the offensive players. We talk a lot about the, the up and coming pitchers, but it's good to see the guys on offense, the, the Jake Marisnicks and Kyle Jensen, who we saw in spring training. It's good to see them get better and show that they can get up here. Zimmerman, a little tapper. Dietrich throws him out. A nice play by Giancarlo Stanton. And two innings have passed in D.C.
DC, Marlins and Nationals. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Giancarlo Stanton is hoping he gets a, a shot at Jordan Zimmerman this inning. Danny Echeverria, Henderson Alvarez, and Christian Yelich with Dietrich and Stanton if anybody reaches. Between tweets and emails, haven't had a chance to scout Jordan Zimmerman. Real easy delivery. You watch that for a couple of innings. Short, quick slider when he's on his game, and we've seen him field his position. He's a very good athlete out there. Matter of fact, in high school, he was a wide receiver and played on the basketball team as well. Here is Echevarria. First pitch swing pops it foul and out of play. Some fans have tweeted different underrated in their their minds uh, Marlins players Luis Castillo Charles Johnson and and then Danny Echevarria. Ramos runs it down and makes the catch. Echevarria trying to bunt pops it up. I always marvel at how a catcher who's down behind the plate with all that gear on can flip the mask off, pick up the ball, keep all that concentration and make the play. So nicely done by Wilson Ramos. And a strike. To Henderson Alvarez. Well, I guess you know for a guy like Louis Castillo, underrated nationally, certainly. Even though he was decorated as a player with gold gloves and uh, all-star appearance and a world championship ring. But again, when you watched him day in and day out, you thought, man, this is one be better second baseman you're ever going to see. So he wasn't underrated. But yes, nationally. That's what I meant. And there's a, a moving target here in terms of what's underrated. Nationally, I think mm -hmm. he was. As a uh, Marlin, and you getting to watch him play every day, probably not. Well, we've talked about it so often that that 03 defense uh, in the infield, probably the best at every position that, that I've seen with Mikey Lowell, Alice Gonzalez, Louis, and Derek Lee. There's Yelich now, second time through against Jordan Zimmerman. Yelich doubled in the first. Marlin's got a Stanton single as well. And the Casey McGee ground ball turned into an inning ending double play. Osme wants to know any update on home run derby participants. Don't you think John Carlos Stanton battling against Juana Cespedes? <laughs> that would, would be, be nice. fun to watch. Oh, absolutely. They haven't gotten the infights out yet. That'll that'll come. I don't think there's any doubt that John Carlos Stanton, barring an injury, is going to be on that all-star team. He's having a an incredibly dynamic season and has become one of the more popular players in Major League Baseball. Rendon across the diamond. And Zimmerman goes one, two, three. An eight pitch inning.
runs in D.C. Marlins and Braves on Saturday. Now remember, Saturday Spectacular is a 4-10 start. Still, you can get the all-you-can-eat seats for just 27 bucks after the game. A live concert on the West Plaza with multi-platinum hip-hop superstar B.O.B. Go to Marlins.com for tickets for 410 on Saturday. Alvarez, second time through for the Nationals. Top of the order, Denard Spann, Anthony Rendon, and Jason Worth. I'll bet Denard Spann took note last night that his former running mate in Minnesota finally hit a home run as a Philly. Ben Revere, first major league home run. He homered in his 1,466th at bat. <laughs> Alvarez sprawls on the dirt. Echeverria picks it up and fires to first. Alvarez is a. He's a live wire on the mound. There's, there's, he's really hard to categorize. He's extremely athletic. Sometimes he can be downright reckless or acrobatic, whichever you choose. He has that quick move to first, but sometimes he'll be a little too quick and throw it away. He's really a hard guy to describe when people ask you about a scouting report for him, or even when you ask Chuck Hernandez, his pitching coach. To give you a thumbnail on Alvarez, Chuck will look at you like thumbnail on Alvarez. <laughs> Have you got 20 minutes? Hey, the one thing Chuck did say today uh, when we talked to him is that Henderson's uh, put in his work. There, there are times, and a lot of it is just his choice. There are times that he doesn't throw between starts, but he's done that every time this year. He's put in a lot of extra work. Now that hasn't always been because he just doesn't want to work hard. right it's because of fear of injury or just trying to stay fresh or healthy and after a couple of the complete games went down they didn't work as hard as they normally would didn't all out effort throw between starts but still got it done counts one and two to Anthony Rendon he bounced out in the first struck him out Alvarez gets the strikeout and there are two outs here in the third. This is a pitch that Henderson doesn't use as much as the fastball and changeup, but low breaking ball. The slider up in the zone, but he froze a Randone and picked up the strikeout. He was in the zone, Randi Institute bringing you Fox Tracks. Let's slip in an email. Do you guys remember 1997 and Muscle Boy? I do. If so, he's in my kitchen right now eating dinner. It's my brother, Ryan. Maybe Muscle Boy was underrated. I think he might have been. <laughs> that's Kyle from Lake Worth. So that's his brother Ryan was Muscle Boy. In the late 90s. And of course. Uh, was a starring feature. In 97. In that World Series run. Yes he was up on the big screen during some rallies. Muscle Boy shirt off. Young kid. Yeah it was fun. The, the crowd really got into it. Worth is not in a pleasant mood after that call as he's. It's easier for Worth to mutter than any other player because you can't see his mouth anyways. In the right Stanton is there. And he makes the catch and Alvarez figures. Whatever Zimmerman can do. He could do John Carlos coming up score this ball game.
is the fourth. Giancarlo due up second. Time now for the Just for Men mustache and beard play like a champ profile. All-time OPS leader in this ballpark, Giancarlo Stan. And look who's second. Former Marlon Hanley Ramirez. That's minimum 100 plate appearances. So in this ballpark, no one has had more success since they opened the place than Giancarlo Stan. I think if you asked uh, the Nationals, they would have that answer right off the top of their head. <laughs> they know that. Derek Dietrich leads it off. Takes a fastball into left field, a base hit. And it bounces in front of McClough. Dietrich's on first. But here's the thing when the crack staff started looking at this list, they can't stop. They noticed other ballparks and they wondered, well, who are the OPS leaders in other ballparks? And look at this list. You've got Bonds at Turner Field, Jeff Conine at Coors Field. That's why Niner always gets jealous when we go to Colorado. Stan at Nationals Park, Mike Jacobs at Citizens Bank Park, and look at Omar Infante at City Field. Bonds is the all-time leader at any field as a visiting player. So there you go. And by the way, here's an example with John Carlo. A lot of other teams and, and scouts they'll say, well, how come he's not walking more? A well, perfect example, the guys in front of him are getting on. Dietrich with the base hit. So with nobody out, you're not going to pitch around John Carlo and put runners at first and second and nobody out. And that just didn't happen last year. Stanton singled back in the first. And a swing and a miss. We welcome the Gecko to the telecast. Our Geico quote of the night. It happens in baseball. Some things you can't explain like that, but I understand. I do a little better here. I can. I can't attest to it to anything. And that's him talking. Hey, about don't overthink it. His success at Nationals Park. Just keep swinging. I think every hitter knows. The ballparks in which he hits, even you know, there obviously a lot of players know their stats, know, follow the game closely. There's some guys that don't, some guys that, but they know where they hit well. They know the pitchers they hit well. Stanton swings and misses at the three-one. The count full three and two. So far, Zimmerman's gone hard in with the good fastball. He's missed in, but then he's gone with the slider away. All right, would you start Derek Dietrich here? Yeah. Not running. And it's way outside and Stanton walks. And it brings McGee up first and second. I like Kiva's tweet. Kiva has an underrated former Marlin. One of the better backup catchers in Marlin's history. Mike Redmond. <laughs> well, and that's one of the uh, themes that we've got on email and Twitter Tuesday. Underrated. Doesn't have to be a Marlin, but. We've kind of gotten on to underrated Marlins in history. McGee. Ground ball base hit right field around third holding there with worse arm and Stanton is caught off of second in between third Dietrich. Holds third Stanton is tagged out and the Marlins. Watch that one completely. McGee delivered the base hit. Worth has a good throwing arm. And with nobody out, Brett Butler held the runner at third. Yeah, and you, if you're John Carly, you just have to know all that. You have to know the ball was hit pretty hard. You have to know Worth charges balls well, has a good arm. He had his head down. He didn't see Dietrich being held. Dietrich did what he was supposed to do. So already the Marlins have had two base running blunders. Between second and third. It was Christian Yelich who was caught off second on a ground ball to short. And here's Jones. And he takes a fastball up. One of the things that didn't happen on that play, Tommy, is that Casey McGee was unable to get to second base. I don't know if he felt he didn't have time, but you could see Stanton waving to him. Trying to get him over to second. Yeah, when you get caught like that, you you hope that the the runner will hit the ball can move up and get into a scoring position, but that didn't happen. Another base hit though for Casey McGee's gotten a couple of base hits lately. 
with runners in scoring position that haven't driven in a run because uh, he's hit the ball a little too hard. Jones is in a hitter's count here, 2 and 0. Oh. And he hammers his foot. The count is 2 and 1. Lots of tweets and uh, emails with uh, underrated players. Me, M E, on Twitter. Underrated Marlins, Alex Gonzalez, Mark Kotze, Alfredo Amezaga, Josh Willingham. Yeah, those are some good names. And he wants Dontrell Willis on the list, but I don't think Dontrell Willis was underrated. I think he was rated quite highly actually as an all-star and one of the more popular players in baseball during his time. Travis says if uh, if you give Tallahassee Marlin fans a shout out I will personally buy Rich Waltz and Tommy Hutton a beer. Well you just did. I think that's against the uh, FCC regulations. I don't think we can. What buying a beer or giving a shout out. Give me a shout out for free stuff. OK. So McGee's at first. This is a big at bat right here. And Dietrich is at third. And now Jones is sitting on a 3 2 pitch. Infield not really shifted too much. And Jones lines it to right field. Worth's not going to get it. It's in the gap. Scoring is Dietrich. Worth cuts it off. McGee gets to third. Miami's on the board. And Garrett Jones drives in his 26th run of the season. Nice job by Garrett Jones and the reason that was a big at bat because you have that first and third one out if he pops up or strikes out all of a sudden Jordan Zimmerman feels he can get out of the inning. But Jones takes care of a high fastball. He's a good low fastball hitter but he stayed on top of that got it into the gap deep enough that it allowed Casey McGee to go from first to third Dietrich scored easily. So great bit of hitting good a B. Good base hit by Garrett Jones. Now Salta Lamacchia who struck out in the second. And a big swing and a miss. Salta Lamacchia in a spot here where a fly ball would produce the second run of the ball game. Pitches in. Richards underrated fish. Include Chris Hammond, Pat Rapp, and Emilio Bonifacio. Ah, the rapper. Lefty Chris Hammond. Mm. Oh, our producer uh, John Seltzer just came up with a, a big one. Instrumental in postseason out of the bullpen. Boy, would the Marlins love to have a guy like Dennis Cook right now. And he also pinch hit and <laughs> got some big pinch hits. <laughs> Much like Giovanni Gallardo did yeah. last night with a walk off double for the Brewers. Well, Salt Lamaki has been unable to make contact tonight against Zimmerman. And his one two pitch is up two and two. There's how to get. On with us tonight. Web Wednesday, according to Preston Wilson. Email Twitter as we were rained out last night. Those are our addresses. And a swing and a miss. And Salt to Lamacchia. Unable to make contact. He has struck out twice against Zimmerman. And for Jordan Zimmerman, those are his two strikeouts in the game. Marlins have an off day tomorrow and back at it. The South Florida Honda dealers bring you Marlins live pregame with the Atlanta Braves coming to town. The Braves, first place team, the Marlins, a second place team, a game and a half behind Atlanta. Breaking ball up the middle and in the center field, off the glove of Franzen. And Miami chases the run home. It's Ozuna. Who's driven in 32 now this year? Yeah, that's great to see. As big as the Garrett Jones base hit was, the one by Osuna bigger because there were two out. 
And a base hit required to get in a run in this situation. This ball eats up the second baseman Kevin Franson because it was stung by Ozuna. You think he lost it in the umpire? Could have been screened out a little bit, but that ball was hit hard. Base hit all the way. First and second, two outs. Here's Echeverria. Yeah, Zuna keeps himself in the uh, in the top ten in the National League in RBIs. Soft liner right field it's a base hit Jones around third he will score Ozuna pulls in at third ball gets loose Ozuna's coming home and he will score and a uh, heads up play good by job by Echeverria Echeverria stopped allowed the run to score and the Marlins get two out of his base hit. Oh that's a young player with a heads up play underrated. That inning and just like that it's a four nothing lead. First of all terrific swing by Danny Echevria who is stuck with the game plan. He's had a little trouble getting base hits but he's hit a lot of balls the other way so that's good to see hit it soft enough to score Garrett Jones. It's an error on the right fielder. The ball gets away. Echevria heads to second. Here comes Ozuna. Etch wants to make sure Ozuna scores. And doesn't get tagged out. We saw that the other day in, in Ryan Braun maybe pulling up a little late. And the Brewers not getting the run. So a heads up play by Echeverria to not get tagged before Ozuna came in and crossed the plate. Adam LaRoche leads it off for the Nationals. Sprays a ground ball. Echeverria has it. Across the diamond in time. And Alvarez with a ground ball out to open up the bottom of the fourth with Wilson Ramos and Ian Desmond around the bend. It is an email Twitter Wednesday tonight. And Ramos climbs in. Terry in Lantana. Giancarlo's defense is underrated. Yeah, I think so. The recent double play catch and throw to first. Of course, Don Mattingly the other day said that they felt that. Yasiel Puig was the best right fielder in all the baseball right now. Good fastball in on the hands. And it's one ball and one strike. It makes for a great discussion. Now, here's another thing. Let me let me just say this. Let me here's here's the end of discussion. Okay. If you ask 50 scouts who they would rather have, Stanton or Puig, 50 of them would say Stanton. Uh, I would go probably 40. I'll bet you there's 10 that would have three. Yeah, maybe. Okay. But here's my point on that. As Ramos is out. 
We saw earlier the All Star voting in the outfield: Charlie Blackman, Ryan Braun, and Andrew McCutcheon are in the outfield. Stan is fourth. Puig is fifth. And I think both Stan and Puig probably should, should, be, should there. be there. Blackman's cooled off a little bit, getting a lot of support certainly from the Rockies fans. And to be honest, I don't think Braun should be there. And is that based on numbers or past history? Past history. I've got one for you. Travis says, says underrated Rich. Donnie bleeping Murphy. Donnie, bleep <laughs> Donnie Murphy had a home run stolen from him. Did you see that play in, in uh, oh, I missed that. Minnesota. A great catch. I believe it was uh, what's the center fielder's name in Minnesota Hicks. Stole a home run from Donnie bleeping Murphy who probably said the word bleeping. Mm -hmm. But uh, Don, we may we will see Donnie Murphy with Texas. Cody Ross another oh. underrated Marlin in past history Alex gives us that name. So yeah there have been a few. He's an underrated Marlin. He was certainly an underrated giant too. And I think a lot of Marlins over the years have been underrated just because the Marlins has a franchise and just haven't gotten a lot of national attention. Marcel says Lenny Harris best pinch hitter the Marlins have ever had all time the all time pinch hitter. Here's Ian Desmond. With a 2 2 coming. Alvarez uh, has a lead. He looks to be a nice rhythm out there. Now we've been asking for underrated anything not not only baseball but underrated things in life. How about the crack staff? They underrated. Yeah, well, yeah, they're critically acclaimed at times, but but Jim has sent in a good list, like driving with the top down, getting an empty row on an airplane, playing tennis on a grass court in bare feet. A swing and a miss. Ah, good job. Henderson Alvarez and Miami on top in D.C. Think Miami on top of the Nationals. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig, Rich, thank you very much. As you guys know, the Marlins play the bulk of their schedule in terms of you're going to play one division or the other against Washington and the NL East to 47 percent, 76 games against their own division. So I'll give you an underrated one. The Marlins play of late against division opponents. You may recall they got off to an awful start. They lost nine of their first 10 against the division and 12 of the first 15. But guess what the last 10 games now not including tonight they've won nine of the last 10 nine and one they've outscored the opponent by near over two to one margin now 57 26 so 
Good play over there by Rendon to get the out. The Marlins will also finish the season with 25 of the last 29 and maybe 26 or 30, depending what they do with the makeup game, against their division. If you're going to make some noise, you've got to compete against your own division. The Marlins have been doing that last uh, five, four series so far. Guys? Well, that's a good point because if the Marlins uh, are able to win this game tonight, they will go to 13 and 13 now against the National League East. Here's Christian Yelich. A fastball is up and in. David wants to know can I get some good luck on my CPA exam tomorrow? I'm watching the fish instead of studying. I would think a CPA exam is not an easy one. I don't think it'd be easy to study for that. Uh, I mean, we're, we're happy that you're watching. And keep watching, just study later. <laughs> Yelich into right field, base hit. And so he lines one into right. Christian Yelich, a two for three night tonight. Well, as Craig was talking about, the Marlins have played well against their division, and the Marlins' division looks like this. It's brought to you by the South Florida Lexus dealers, Nationals three back. Miami a game and a half back and then New York four and a half back the Phillies are five back now Dietrich who was singled and bounced into a fielder's choice. It was Dietrich that started the fourth. If you're just uh, rolling in and just tuning in, the Marlins got four runs in the fourth on five hits. Dietrich, McGee, Jones, Ozuna, and Echeverria all with singles. Stanton walked. And the Nationals committed an error. You know, quietly, that's a big part of that inning. You had the, the leadoff base hit. Then all of a sudden, Zimmerman missed a couple pitches inside, fastballs, missed with the slider for ball four. So with Stanton walking all of a sudden, first and second, and nobody out. So that was a big part of that inning. So either way, he always looms in that on deck circle and at, at the plate. Emails and a rant. I think fans just like to hear you rant. Can't rant with a four nothing lead. Well, with the Braves coming to town, and last time they were here, they accused the Marlins of stealing. Why signs. do I know where you're going with this? This is from Cody. Throw to first. How about a little respect, Tommy? You can rant better, but there are fans that do not think. The Marlins get enough respect. Totally agree. And they just outplayed the Braves in that series. Yelich is running. He kind of got a spinning start. Didn't get a clean break. And Dietrich pulls it foul. The catch two and two. Seven of eight. That's the only time he's been caught last year in his uh, rookie season. Yelich didn't run a lot. He was 10 of 10. Ground ball. Franzen has it. Goes to second. And he gets the out. Desmond hung in on the play. Nice play by Kevin Franzen. Well, that's a heck of a play and uh, a little chancy on Franson's part because of the speed of Christian Yelich. But he was able to pick it and then make a good throw to Desmond at short. And they got it. Stanton now. And the pitch misses outside. So far, there's been no rain. 
but the clouds above are really dark and the wind has changed a little bit too and ominous. One oh pitches under the hands of Stanton. Giancarlo singled in the first walked in the fourth. A strike. Next Friday, Marlins and Braves. This Friday, next telecast. Julio Tehran and Tom Kohler. Marlins shuffled their rotation with the rain out yesterday. Randy Wolf will not make a start this weekend. Fly ball, right field line, and it's pushed into the seats and out of play. The wind is really swirling right now. I got to be honest with you, partner. I think in about 10 minutes, this is going to be a very wet field. That's why I'd like to get five complete innings in to make it official. 2 2 Stanton swings and misses. Well, the Marlins need three outs to make it official. Seven Nissan and Palmetto 57 Volkswagen, home of your money back guarantee. By 22 Jump Street in theaters June 13th, and by Rand Eye Institute. Imagine clear, focused vision without the hassle of glasses or contacts. For more information, go to randeye.com. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini, and Preston Wilson with us as well on a night where the Marlins and the Nationals have played four and a half innings. Fastball from Alvarez is a strike. But to be honest with you, it feels like, and it looks like, it even smells like this game may be stopped here in the next 15, 20 minutes because dark clouds have appeared over DC. Bouncer and Alvarez pounces on it, fires to first. Miami has built a 4 0 lead, and they did it with four runs in the fourth inning. Alvarez has been oh. splendid. He had a tweet earlier. I, I wish I remembered the name, but it was uh, from a guy who thought Henderson Alvarez was bribing you and I because we kept saying he's a good athlete. He's a good athlete. That's why he made that play, and he's not bribing us. All right. Now, truth be told here, as McLeod is up, my partner didn't get animated because of that email. <laughs> he got animated because he was perusing the tweets between innings. And I almost had to call 911 to calm him down. So, Tommy, if you want to read that, and fans, if you want a good rant, buckle in. Here you go. Well, it was, it was Thomas. Thomas at T.P. Campbell. The national reputation of the Marlins is one of mediocrity. Just look at their history. Great players, bad record. How about two world championships? Where are the championship banners here in this ballpark? 
for the Nationals. How about the Astros, the Padres? What about the Cubs? So I would not say two world championships is mediocrity in the amount of time that the Marlins have won. Without a doubt. But you played for a, a storied franchise that started playing in the 1800s, the Phillies, and, and they had the same amount of world championships. So there you go. You know what? You were a lot calmer on the air than you were between innings. Because there were some things I couldn't say on the air that I said between <laughs> innings. And he said them. I had, I had time to settle down. He said them. <laughs> Thank goodness none of you have the old satellite dishes that you, where you could pick up the audio between innings and during commercials. Tyler Moore is going to pinch hit here after the McLeod single. And so Jordan Zimmerman's night is done. You saw Ross Detweiler warming up in the Nationals bullpen. You know, there's one guy that Henderson Alvarez is really uh, happy that he's on the disabled list and not in the lineup, and that's Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper, six for 13 with a couple of home runs against Alvarez. Count is 2 and 0. Oh, four hits for the Nationals. All of them singles. McLeod has two of them. Shallow center with a swirling win. It's Ozuna who rushes in and makes the catch. Toyota trend here tonight in Washington, D.C. Missing parts since the 28th Nationals record with Harper and Zimmerman in the lineup. This goes back to 2012 and a 57 percent winning percentage clip without them. They're just a game over 500 and that dates back to Bryce Harper's debut. There is Span. He lines one into right field. That's a base hit. Stanton picks it up. McLeod stops. And Rendon comes up with runners at first and second. Just getting some good old names from Marlins past as far as underrated. Bums. C2S. Gave us a Brett Barbary. Had a good year in the expansion year 1993 came back and hit 301 in 94. Now with two outs. Rendon has struck out and bounced out. Breaking ball fly ball left center Ozuna's calling Yelich is calling and Ozuna catches Yelich relents and Henderson Alvarez is almost in the dugout. <laughs> Four nothing Miami. We go to the sixth.
Anderson Alvarez, we told you he wa walked off pretty quickly once he got the fly ball. Here's a look. Watch. <laughs> There's the fly ball. He knows it's routine. Okay, he's out of there. A little bit of hesitation when he saw Ozuna and Yelich get together. I think if you asked Henderson, he said he would tell you, well, I was handed over to back up third in case it fell That's in. That's exactly what he'd say. Ross Detweiler for the Nationals. So five innings of work for Jordan Zimmerman. Casey McGee, Garrett Jones, and Jared Saltalamachia on a on an email and Twitter Wednesday because of the rain out last night. It still looks threatening above, but uh, none of the real wet stuff yet. Hey, so far so good, and it is an official game now, too. Ross Detweiler, we've seen him over the years. He'll throw 90% fastballs. He'll mix in a breaking ball once in a while. We have a lot of fans. Sending a, a note in that was going to fall for a base hit. McGee got jammed. And Casey McGee has two hits. He dumps it into right field. Saturday, full day of Major League action. And the Marlins and the Braves take center stage on Fox Sports 1. And then it's Baseball Night in America on Fox, the Rays, and the Red Sox. Major League Baseball doubleheader begins with Marlins and Braves on Fox Sports 1 at 3.30 Eastern. A lot of fans are tweeting and emailing that retractable roofs are underrated. Air conditioning underrated. Not if you live in South Florida. No. <laughs> in a ballpark, it's underrated. This is a good one. Underrated. Lanny. Or Lonnie. Hardcore, diehard Marlins fans. Underrated. You know what's overrated? This press box. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, the weather's coming and the wind is gusting. And we are eight stories up. We are higher than the light towers. And there's no protection from the rain. There's no overhang up, up here at all. We're not like tucked back into anything. In we're, protection. We're going to be in big trouble. Safe. Hustling down to first. Garrett Jones beats it. Another look. So here we are. We're high up here. That's right. And it's and the and the baseball is way, way, way down there. I remember the, the first year we came here, we got cute and we added the echo to our voice. So that when we yelled down, it, it gave that cavernous looking over a cliff feeling. We've gotten over that. I, I keep wanting to do this, but I don't think it would be legal. That would be to uh, to borrow, and it would it would be borrow. One of the, uh, you know, when the uh, flight attendants give the uh, demonstration, the oxygen mask, and borrow one of those, and bring it here. <laughs> so Lamakia struck out twice from the other side. AJ has a question. He just uh, happened by, hasn't heard if there is a makeup date for the rain. Out. We haven't heard either. We have an assumption, but we haven't heard anything official. And the assumption would be it will be a makeup date at the very end of the year. The last series of the season, the Marlins are here in D.C. for a three game series, but they would make that a four game series, and it probably would be a day nighter on the Saturday. And from what I heard today, it might not be till Monday or Tuesday when we hear that official word.
Saw that shot of Chris Hatcher throwing in the bullpen. I don't know if he'd just be getting some work or if there's an issue with Henderson Alvarez. Well, Soto Lamarca strikes out. I would think that. Um, well, if he's up right now. I think he's getting hot to come in the game, Tommy. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's throwing just to get some work. So then the, the question is, and it would be a concern. Did something happen to Alvarez? Yes. Now, when last we saw him, he was trotting off the field after giving up that fly ball out. He looks fine. He only has 62 pitches, but we don't see him in the dugout right now. Ozuna had a big hit in the fourth. As did Echeverria. The Marlins had it what looked like a, the beginnings of a nice inning with runners first and second. And then on the McGee hit to right, Stanton ran up Yelich's back and was caught between second and third. Jones drove home a run with a single, but then Salta Lamacchia struck out. And you got a sense that Jordan Zimmerman could get out of the inning with just that one run. Ozuna then singled to knock in a run. Echeverria singled. It knocked in one run, and then the throwing error by Worth, a heads up play, Ozuna scored. Into center field, sliding catch by Span, who rolls over on it. Well, we'll find out if Hatcher is coming in. Or if Alvarez was just hiding in the clubhouse. Happened to Henderson Alvarez, who 62 pitches in and has thrown five innings of shutout ball. And we pretty much followed him all the way into the dugout. He appears to be fine here. Not showing, uh, you know, anything unusual, anything, any discomfort. He's saying, all right, a little bit of a smile. Tucking his shirt in, which is uh, normal. It usually pops out after a couple of innings. But we saw nothing in the dugout and then. We did see him duck into the runway, and that's not unusual for a starting pitcher to to go back into the clubhouse for a brief moment during the start. So hopefully we can uh, get confirmation, any word as to what what happened to Henderson Alvarez. But this is a real test now for Miami's bullpen and their depth. And Matt Williams right now is in. 
about what I'm not sure. Did Mike Redman announce? Here comes Redman. If it maybe it's the question of how many warm up tosses if it's an injury does Hatcher get on the mound I don't know. It appeared that Hatcher had enough tosses in the bullpen that he should be ready. But that could be the question that Matt Williams has right now. Hatcher is continuing to warm up so it's not like he's not. Yeah that's not it then. He's not being frozen out here by Matt Williams. I suspect that might be it. If it's an injury, you, you get as many warm up tosses as you need. Hatcher heated up, but it's always nice to get on the mound and throw a few more. This is a real test for the Marlins bullpen. The Marlins middle relief core has not had a lot of depth or success this year. And so they're given a 4 0 lead on the road. And Hatcher is the first one out of the shoot. He gets Worth, LaRoche, and Ramos here in the sixth. Yeah, he jumps right into the meat of the order. And Hatcher, of course, a converted catcher. Throws a fastball that misses someplace. And it's 1 0. Saw Hatcher pitch a couple of good innings at home against Milwaukee. And that is one of the things he's capable of doing, throwing more than one inning. Kind of sounds funny to say that. Look at that first pitch. That was in the strike zone. Somehow Seth Buckminster didn't see it that way. Hatcher, the converted catcher, great arm, great fastball. Little by little, the secondary stuff has developed. And, and in Hatcher's case, that secondary stuff, he will use a slider. That was it there. But the uh, the splitter has been a real good pitch for him. And he's starting to develop that. He worked on it, and it's gotten better over the last couple of years. I would think I would think for a guy that's not a pitcher a guy like Hatcher developing a pitch all of a sudden is not easy because pitchers are tinkerers they like to fool around with grips and spins and finger pressure and all of that. Well Hatcher was a catcher. Into right, Stanton comes racing in. Dietrich is out, and Stanton makes the catch, and Hatcher gets his first out. And Hatcher will refer to himself every once in a while as the backup, backup catcher, the emergency, emergency <laughs> catcher. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's funny, and we, we chuckle about it, but it's nice to have just in case. You never check, know. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Yeah, Rich, thank you very much. You know, talking to Chris Hatcher the other day, he's had his share of disappointments with the Marlins. On the big league level has not pitched as well as he had hoped after a lot of success in the minors as you mentioned a converted catcher to pitcher this time the call up really caught him by surprise not that he wasn't doing well down there he just felt it was for somebody else the little scrub is going to be an infield hit here for Adam LaRoche he's off the 40 man roster got a little skirmish a little fight with a teammate down in the triple A and he saw some other guys doing well and because he was on the 40 man he, he said he was really shocked. He told me that he was called up this time, but uh, the Marlins have noticed him. They've been intrigued with him for a long time, and they're hoping that it'll catch on. They'd like to see that real good stuff he has, as you mentioned, developing secondary pitches pay off on the big league level like it has in the minors. Thank you, Craig LaRoche, with that infield hit. Craig, we didn't see anything with Alvarez, and we followed him with our cameras. You're down in the well. I don't know if you've seen or heard anything, but this seems to be a real mystery as to why after 62 pitches Alvarez had to leave the game. Yeah, absolutely. I did see Ed Lucas as you guys were starting to talk about it with uh, Echeverria grab a helmet. Actually probably the hitter before he started to loosen up with a bat. So they knew a couple of hitters before the spot was coming up that he was coming out. That's why Lucas in the 4 nothing game grabbed a helmet. Obviously his spot did not come up. So Lucas never came up to pitch in. All right. Thank you. Here's Ramos sprays a ground ball to right field. Stan will pick it up. So after getting worth. LaRoche with a little dribbler for a hit. Ramos has a base hit. And now Hatcher faces Ian Desmond. Well, we told you this is a tough part of the order for Hatcher to deal with.
but he's he's actually you think about it made some pretty good pitches. LaRoche was a swinging bunt and he made a good pitch that had him fooled. And Ramos didn't hit that ball hard. Desmond was 0 for 5 in the series. But has enough power to, to change the game in one swing. Joe, on this night where we're reviewing what's underrated in baseball and life, says, Underrated, my wife, who would rather watch the Marlins than American Idol. Way to go, Mrs. Joe. Thank you. Hatcher's gone 3 0 on Desmond. Dan Jennings is up in Miami's pen. Five mile an hour fastball. I think years ago, you could have said underrated pitchers who pitch in the sixth and seventh inning, but not now. In today's game, you can't say that. They're not underrated tonight, and they're not underappreciated or undervalued tonight. They're absolutely necessary if Miami's going to win this ball game. Marlins bullpen ERA has hovered just below four. He's been right around 10th or 11th in the National League. He lost him. And the bags are loaded. You see where pitch number five was. Fox Sports Florida proud to introduce the all-new Miami Marlin Fan Express first class coach bus with VIP seating for up to 50. Just email groups at Marlins.com or call 305-480-2523 for more information. On how you and your friends can travel in style to see the fish play at Marlins Park all season long. Well, looking at that uh, Fox tracks, it looks like uh, Seth Buckminster's strike zone got a little small on Chris Hatcher. Yeah, he was locked in with Henderson Alvarez out there, and right now he's having trouble adjusting to the to the new pitcher. But for Hatcher now, he's got to make some good pitches and certainly make the Nationals earn it. I mean those pitches missed where he wanted to miss down in the strike zone. And on Fox tracks that was in the strike zone. On the black. But it doesn't matter now the bags are loaded and Hatcher needs to throw strikes in a hurry. Fastball. Foul back. We talked about Miami's struggles in the pen. There's Kevin Franzen. Remember, with the bags loaded when the Marlins were here early in the year, Jason Worth, Grand Slam, Ian Desmond, Grand Slam. Both of those were game changers. One off Carlos Marmol, the other off Archimedes Caminero. LaRoche, Ramos, and Desmond. There's one out. It's the bottom of the sixth, and you can see the rain is coming. Franzen had a big swing, and he fouls it off, and it's 0 2. Hatcher, a North Carolina guy. Boy, remember the last game that Tannerson Alvarez pitched? He left the game against the Phillies after seven innings with a three to nothing lead and got a no decision. 
Oh two. Got him. And that's the split. And that's nasty. Big pitch by Chris Hatcher. Well, that's a good job. A good comeback by Chris Hatcher. Here's the pitch by pitch to Franson. Good fastball. Franson with a good swing. He'd like to have that one over. There's a breaking ball. So he got ahead quickly and then put him away with the split. So a good job and a good comeback, especially in that situation with the bases loaded. If Chris Hatcher can throw the split with consistency, he can pitch here and have success here. In the right, it's a base hit. Nate McClough is going to deliver two runs, and he's on his way to second. He'll get there with a double. And Washington is on the board. It's 4 2. Three hit night for Nate McLeod, who came in hitting 143. Well, the pitch that McLeod hit looked like it was up in the zone. That might have been the split that didn't split. Didn't have much dive to it, just hung right out over the plate. And McLeod, who's hot tonight, certainly took advantage of it. The Nationals are going to bring Danny Espinosa up, and Mike Redman is going to bring in the lefty and flip Espinosa around. The mystery of Henderson Alvarez exit still looms here in D.C. and a 4-2 Marlin lead now. DC two outs in the sixth that got us to thinking in our AT&T universe with rain in DC one of the longest games it seemed like in Marlins history Mother's Day 2006 it started on Saturday and ended on Sunday morning Ryan Zimmerman a young Ryan Zimmerman with a walk off grand slam boy that was a early morning Big home run, which uh, Ryan Zimmerman has hit many on on holidays. That one on Mother's Day. So right. now it's up to Dan Jennings, who with Espinosa switch hitter. He just goes over to the right side, but the uh, Nationals have runners at second and third. Espinosa 239 against lefties. There's 196 against righties. Jennings misses away. His power numbers, though, four homers from the left side of the plate, from the right side of the plate. Espinosa has a couple of homers. Part of it, I think, that Mike Redmond just felt that he didn't want Chris, Chris Hatcher to throw to another hitter. He just didn't like what he saw. That probably has a lot more to do than the splits. A strike, and it's one and one.
You can hear the wind whistling through this ballpark. Swirling winds, dark skies, rain seemingly about to come down. It has started. It is sprinkled here for the last 10 minutes. Two and one. Two runs across Nate McLeod's third hit of the game. Driving home Adam LaRoche and Wilson Ramos. Desmond and Franzen, excuse me, Desmond and McLeod are out there in scoring position right now. And Espinoza, who has struggled with runners in scoring position, has a 2 1 pitch. It almost hit him. A breaking ball that misses in. Now, if Jennings loses Espinoza, he's got Denard Span on deck. Well, Span, a left handed hitter. So if in fact that does happen, he'll have a matchup in his favor. Lowest average with runners in scoring position and two outs. Jared Saltalamaki also on that list as well. Espinoza steps out. The bases are loaded, and there's no room for error now. Well, if you want to know what the Marlins' problems have been to this point in the season, we're seeing it firsthand. And through it all, the Marlins come into this game two games over 500, 27 and 25. And here is Span. He's one for three. So lefty on lefty action here. With Span and Jennings. Bags loaded. Outfield swung towards left center. First pitch strike. 0 and 1. Miami's next wave of prospects are arms. Starting pitchers. Good ones. Andrew Heaney. Flynn. Nicolino. We've already seen Di Sclafani. The Marlins are trying to find some arms that can pitch middle relief. There's opportunities to be had, whether you're Hatcher, whether you're Jennings. Here's the 01. That's one of the questions, and it's obviously an organizational decision. But in the past, other teams in the case of a David Price and Adam Wainwright had guys come up. These were different situations though. They were in postseason situations and had starting pitchers pitch out of the bullpen. Who I don't have to tell you David Price and Adam Wainwright have gone on to become terrific starters. Because when you look at the talent in the Marlins minor league system they're all starting pitchers. So to Lamacchio to talk to Jennings, it, this feels like the eighth inning, and it's only the sixth. And if you're just joining us, Miami had a 4 nothing lead. Henderson Alvarez got the final out of the fifth inning. Smiling, jogged off the field, and that's the last we saw of him. He disappeared into the Marlins clubhouse after 62 pitches. 0 2 pitch. To Lamacchia smothering. And it's one and two. No word from Miami's clubhouse as to any injury or any issue that uh, took Alvarez out of the game. Certainly, Mike Redmond didn't lift him. And there were never any signs. Or there was no indication when he came off the field. One and two. To the Nationals leadoff man, Denard Span. Bags are loaded, two outs. Jennings. Yeah. 
This is a key pitch right now, 2 2, because Dan Jennings certainly doesn't want to go 3 2. They've been using a lot of sliders. Salt de Lamaki has done a good job because he knows if he buries that slider away, he doesn't want that ball to get by him. Two two coming. Jennings to the plate. Bouncer Jones backing up has it, throws it away. A run scores. And it's four three. Well, he got the ground ball. But neither Jones nor Jennings looked like they were on the same page. Yeah, this was going to be a tough play either way you looked at it. Uh, it was going to be bang bang because Span runs so well. Dan Jennings was there, but the throw behind him, he had no chance. If he gets a throw ahead of him, I think he beats Span to the bag. But the throw from Garrett Jones, not there. The inning continues, and just like that, it's a one run game. It's going to be an E3, no RBI. And the Nationals are within a run. And now you've got a, a solid right handed bat, albeit a slumping one, in Rendon, who gets to face the lefty, Jennings. And thus the inability for Hatcher to get through the, the bottom of the order, and the inability of Jennings to get Espinosa. Now you're into Rendon with Worth on deck. There's nobody throwing in Miami's bullpen. And Jennings throws a strike. Versus lefties, Rendon very good. A 348 hitter against lefties. They're the splits. So this is not the matchup that Mike Redmond was hoping for. He was hoping for a one, two, three inning from Hatcher. Well, Redmond's two best relievers outside of Steve Ciszek, his closer, that went fouled at the plate have been Mike Dunn and A.J. Ramos, and he obviously can't use those guys here in the sixth. For Redmond, the hope was build a bridge to either Dunn or Ramos, but right now that one is crumbling. Mike Redmond still trying to piece those uh, pieces together to build that bridge. One and two, three runs across. Here's a one two and it's out. And so the Marlins in the bullpen now have Archimedes Caminero warming up. Caminero has had his struggles both at the big league level and in the minor leagues. Big pitch here. Two and two to Rendon. To right, it's well hit. Stanton back at the track, looks up, and he makes the catch at the wall. And that one hauled in by Stanton at the track. Three runs for the Nationals, a one run game now.
7th. The rain has been a little intermittent, but not any heavy stuff yet. Half Price Tuesday is coming up, and it's the Rays and the Marlins who will play on this Half Price Tuesday. Home run porch tickets, bullpen reserved with the Miami Herald Half Price Tuesday. For full details, pick up the Tuesday edition of the Miami Herald or El Nuevo Herald. Now the Nationals go to their bullpen. Drew Storen comes in. You can see that. All right, let me make a point and show you the difference in the two bullpens. Right now, the Nationals come in with a guy who a few years ago, 2011, saved 43 games. Yes, Drew Storen has had some troubles, but he's put it together. This year, he's added a much better changeup to go along with the fastball and slider. And look at the ERA, 106. So Storen's available. You know you're going to see Tyler Clippard. And if it gets to a safe situation, should the Nationals take a lead, they have Soriano. Jordan Zimmerman, five innings, eight hits, four runs, three of them earned. And the Marlins are bringing up guys who haven't had success in AAA. Bottom line. Which would tell you that uh, Miami would certainly help themselves by getting a few more runs. <laughs> We talked about trying to get to the seventh inning, and the Marlins still have the lead, albeit just a one run lead. Echeverria out to center field. And the, the ability to build a bridge between the fifth inning and A.J. Ramos and Mike Dunn, and so it's Ramos up. And, and that's good news, and the other good news is the fact that there wasn't a game last night because of the rain out. So. Uh, there's some guys that should be fresh. There's an off day tomorrow, so you can stretch a little bit in that bullpen. You, know, you can stretch everybody. You yeah. can stretch Ramos. You can stretch Dunn, and you can stretch Cisha. That one hot foul and out of play. All right, emails and tweets. We kind of. Have veered off of that certainly because of the, the course of the game. Jeff Baker is pinch hitting here. We are still awaiting and, and have not received any word as to the status of Henderson Alvarez. If there was an injury, if he became ill. Breaking ball is a called strike. Baker didn't like it. And the counts 0 and 2. You're right about Storm though, Tommy. He had his struggles last season. Storm actually went down to Triple A, and after he came back up after July, his ERA was 1.40. Talking with uh, Steve McCaddy, pitching coach with the Nationals, LaRoche has it go into the seats. And we're talking about that uh, a changeup that has really helped Storm. Doesn't use it a lot, but it was a pitch that he really didn't use before. He was mostly fastballs and sliders. By the way, the other good news is that usually if there's rain imminent, you see the ground crew around the tarp. But we haven't seen them there, so that's good. I mean, the temperatures change. Well, I know Washington, D.C. is a big city, but as the Marlins left this ballpark last night, water was pouring out of everywhere. That's strike three called. And once the Marlins bus arrived just to, across town, there was no rain falling at all at the team hotel. So hopefully the wet stuff is dodging Nationals Park. Top of the order, Yelich now. Rolls it to first, LaRoche. One, two, three, go to Fish in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch, Marlins bullpen. Trying to hold a 4 3 lead.
four, three, bottom seven. Ah, yes, Rich, back in the fourth inning. The uh, weather was a little better. The Marlins offense was good. Garrett Jones, Marcelo Zuna with big base hits. How about Echeverria dropping one into right field? An RBI, then a throwing error by Jason Worth. Another run came in. The Marlins had a 4 nothing lead. But then a big base hit by Nate McLeod drives in a couple. And then on the error, the Nationals get their third run. Wide throw at first. The error charged to Garrett Jones. And just like that, it's a one-run game. And the temperature's dropped to about 15 degrees. It has. It's actually got a little chilly here on what was a really hot and humid night. A.J. Ramos right into the thick of it. Jason Worth is up. Ramos misses outside. Nine outs. That's what Miami needs here. Nine outs. Against a uh, Nationals ball club that has had their number over the last year or so. A strike. Henderson Alvarez. Right elbow stiffness. That's the word that we've received. So right elbow stiffness removed for precautionary reasons. That's a pop up. Salta Lamakia. And the wind pushing it over the screen. The wind, if you look at the flags, is coming in from right field right now. Those flags sit in left. Two two. Got him, AJ Ramos. Nice curveball. And he gets the strikeout. I'll tell you, a big boost for this bullpen will be if AJ Ramos, because he also has come into the teeth of this lineup, can get through these hitters, keep it a one run game, maybe even uh, give Mike Redman another inning. Mike can match up, though, because he has Mike Dunn and then setting it up for C -Ship. Here's LaRoche now. With Ramos behind him, LaRoche two for three, and he looks good after coming off the disabled list. Mike Dunn stretching. Marlins uh, obviously hope to not have to bring him in until the eighth at some point. Well, you start looking ahead at uh, left handed hitters. McLeod would be the the one guy. He's a few hitters. Few hitters ahead. Outside corner with a fastball one and two. But so far AJ Ramos has come in and thrown the ball really well. The amazing number. On AJ Ramos. Right field, Stanton, who made the nice catch to end the sixth, calls that one in. Right handers are hitting 188 against Ramos, lefties 167. And a lot of that's due to that good changeup. Time now for the ATT fan photo. Hashtag FL fan photo. Chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast. Here it is ATT fan photo. <laughs> Are those the ice cream helmets? I think they are. That we usually see on Doxing, but nice job by Amanda. Was that a superhero? Not in the fan photo. I guess a Power Ranger. That's from a long time ago. No swing on the breaking ball. And he counts 2 and 0 to Ramos. Wilson Ramos, AJ Ramos. AJ Ramos out of Lubbock, Texas. 
Wilson Ramos out of Venezuela. Fastball hammered left field deep and gone. And the game is tied. Wilson Ramos has been another bat that has been missed by the Nationals when he was on the disabled list with that hammock bone injury. Last year, a couple of times on the DL with hamstring issues, still had 16 home runs in just 78 games. And for Ramos, that's his first this year. Here is Desmond. And so the Marlins bullpen now has yielded four runs in an inning and two thirds. And a strike to Desmond, and it's one and one. If you're just joining us, Henderson Alvarez, five innings left with the right elbow stiffness. And had just thrown a few over 60 pitches. Came out as a precautionary move. Marlins brought Chris Hatcher and Dan Jennings into the ball game. And the Nationals got three runs in the sixth. A.J. Ramos here in the seventh. And as Tommy pointed out, the comparison between the Nationals bullpen and the Marlins bullpen both have terrific closers. But the Nationals bullpen deeper. Drew Storen worked a uh, nice and tidy seventh inning. And in all likelihood will come out and work the eighth. Well even in the case of uh, Ross Detweiler who they use Detweiler a guy who has appeared just out of the bullpen this year but a guy who has been a starter. Count full three and two. Braves are trailing the Red Sox two nothing in the sixth. Lost them. Well, Ramos got the first two outs pretty quickly. Wilson Ramos homeward to left. Desmond walks. And here's Franzen. Almost gets a strike and it's 0 and 1. Franzen has homered once this year. Runner bluffs. Desmond doesn't run. Another throw over Desmond back. But on a night where 
We've had tweets and emails, and underrated was the theme. There's no way middle relief is underrated here tonight. Well, not anymore in this day and age, the way the game is played. One and two. Franz and long look down to uh, Bob Henley. Third base coach for the Nationals. Desmond trying to get into scoring position with two outs. Bottom seven. Now one two coming. Ground ball McGee has it gets the out. And the inning is over but Wilson Ramos ties it. Solo homer to the eighth. John Carlos Stanton coming up. All even now for four in D.C. Sprinkled and spritz, but no heavy rain. Marlins and Nationals all tied at four. Yesterday, scores like cold hard fact. Weather postponements all time. On the road, the Phillies. And that's the fourth time the Marlins have been rained out here. And just once in Atlanta. In Miami against the East ten times. That was the rain last night as it uh, washed down. It wouldn't be a Marlins Nationals matchup if Tyler Clifford didn't tow the slab. And here he is. Well, once again, putting together a, a really solid season. And we've talked about Clifford in his career against the Marlins, an ERA of 1.37. And that's in 47 games. So Matt Williams. An inning of Storm, probably an inning of Clipper, and then you've got Soriano. There's the 0 1. And then a fastball up. Clipper's got the devastating change up. The tweets and the emails. A 1.80 ERA this year against the Marlins, and he's already appeared in five games. This is what game number eight between the two teams. Yeah, the Marlins came into tonight two and five against the Nationals. Jonathan tweets in every Marlin fan wished for heavy rain about 10 15 minutes ago. <laughs> a 
changeup swing and a miss. The there one thing in, in, in this modern day with fields that have such advanced drainage systems, even if it rained for an hour or two, especially if the Nationals were behind, everyone here would do everything they could to get the field ready and it's in the hands of the umpires at that point. Yeah once the game starts it's uh, it's in the hands the decision is made by the umpires. But the Marlins and the Nationals would be here a while if it started to rain and both teams had to leave the field. Especially after getting rained out last night. Dietrich. It's a fastball in and he fouls it back. That's the thing about Clifford. He still has good enough zip on that fastball. He's on 92. That just makes that change up even tougher. Dietrich end of bat. Worth. Makes the catch. So went out here in the eighth, and now Giancarlo Stanton comes to the plate at Nationals Park. 34 games. He has hits in 27 of the 34, and those hits have done damage. 14 homers, 14 doubles, a slugging percentage, 767. One for two tonight, a single, a walk, a strikeout. The Nationals know that. He's not done any of that damage though against Tyler Clifford. Stanton just three for 15 with nine strikeouts against Clifford. Clifford with a fastball that misses out. Matt Williams, always a guy that has game face on as a player. Has that same look as a manager. I think few know that he's a really funny guy. And if you YouTube Matt Williams and Babe Ruth, you'll find a video of Williams back in his San Francisco Giant days imitating Babe Ruth and his called shot. It's uh, incredibly <laughs> funny. That's interesting as much success as Clippard has had against Stanton he's still showing him a lot of respect in this at bat. So much so that a 3 1 change yeah. up is in the dirt. So it's almost like with nobody on base and with one out he wasn't afraid to just pitch around Stanton and walk him. I'll tell you what, if Clipper doesn't keep a close eye on Stanton, we've seen occasionally John Carlo will take off and steal a back. Stanton on the year, four for four in stolen bases. And then we know what that does to Casey McGee's batting average. Casey McGee is two for three. Hey, Clipper thinking about that too. Stanton had a pretty healthy lead. Another throw over to first. Gentlemen, can you please give us an update on Carter Katz? Sad to hear about his injury. And that's from Stacy of South Palm Beach. Now, Katz, if he were healthy, would have been pitching in this ball game. But he's on the disabled list. He also has elbow discomfort. We have to make sure Jack, who sent in a tweet, knows that. Henderson Alvarez had to leave the game because of elbow stiffness. As Jack tweets, worst move Redmond's made all year, taking Alvarez out of the game. So obviously, there was a reason. Mike Dunn. So settle down, Jack. He 
And that's not Mike's former manager, Jack. It should be noted. McGee with a count of ball and a strike. This has turned into a two game series with the rain out yesterday. No makeup date has been set. The Marlins are back here at the end of the season. You would suspect a doubleheader in late September. A strike to McGee. Right on the black and right at the letters. Outfield very deep. That's out. Ramos tried to frame it and hold it. And that got the crowd riled up. Say Casey McGee does a real good job in being patient. He will occasionally chase a, a bad pitch, but not very often. And he's got a good battle on his hands with Clipper. Two two. McGee into left field, a base hit. McLeod up with it. Stanton stops at second, and McGee. As his third hit tonight. Uh, Casey won that battle too. Got to pitch up a little bit. Really an interesting graphic on Casey McGee talking about his his uh, base hits with runners in scoring position with one out with two out. This is before tonight's ball game. But uh, overall 426 runners in scoring position. And he's just been amazing. And a good at bat there against a real tough pitcher in Clippard. To get Stanton in scoring position with his base hit. He was one for two with runners in scoring position tonight. Now Jones, and of course, Clifford's devastating changeup comes into play here with the left handed batter. And of course, he pumps in a fastball for strike one. Derek Jones over the years just one for ten against Tyler Clipper. Behind the count 0 and 2 and he's seen two straight fastballs. Salta Lamarca is on deck. Stanton at second McGee's at first. In a 4 4 game, Miami had a 4 0 lead before Henderson Alvarez had to leave with stiffness in his right elbow. Jones stays alive. Go ahead and think about a manager, too, in that situation, Rich. You, you're Mike Redman, you, you see your pitcher out there throwing well, apparently cruising with a 4 0 lead, and then all of a sudden, Slide injury, and you've got to go to that bullpen earlier than you would want. The changeup, and twice now, Jones has broken out the emergency swing just to get a piece. That's okay. Mark sends in an email. A four run lead is overrated. Fastball misses in. That's one and two. Or was it fastball in to set up something soft away? Well, remember, he started him with two straight fastballs. Then he went to a couple of changeups. Out to center. Spam lines it up. 
And there are two outs. MLB.TV Premium, number one live streaming sports service celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers and watch every out-of-market game stream live or on the go in true HD. MLB.TV Premium includes a free AtBat 14 subscription. And it works on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Go to Marlins.com for details. But a tough night for Salta Lamaki. He struck out three times. And as you saw, a tough time with runners in scoring position. Late in ball games, he's had some success. I think one of the reasons for that is that generally Salton Lamaki is pretty patient. And, you know, he will take a walk, has a pretty good eye at the plate. Out at first. McGee is picked. And the Marlins inning ends at first base. The Fish had a 4 0 lead, and then Alvarez left after five with uh, soreness in his elbow, rather tightness in his elbow. Ed Lucas comes into the ball game as Miami gets into their bullpen again. Fourth reliever to come out, Mike Dunn. Well, the move with Ed Lucas, bringing him in to play first, he'll bat ninth. And Dunn will hit in Garrett Jones's spot. With the move there, if Mike Redman can get a couple of innings out of Mike Dunn, then that helps out with the double switch. But the Marlins have had some, have been a lot of things in this game. We, we focused on the, uh, the bullpen, but the base running has uh, not been up to par. They had some base running. Blunders early in the game. Christian Yelich, John Carlo rounding second, not picking up the runner ahead of him, and then Casey McGee getting picked off there. Nate McLeod against Dunn. Then you got the pitcher spot. Scott Hairston is on deck right now, and then top of the order, Denard Span. So Chris Hatcher, Dan Jennings, AJ Ramos, and now Dunn. Hatcher and Jennings pitched the sixth. 
And the Nationals got three runs in that sixth inning. Those runs charged to Hatcher's line. Ramos got the first two outs of the seventh. And then gave up a home run to Wilson Ramos. Wilson Ramos has been so banged up the last few years. McLeod has done damage tonight, that's for sure. McLeod, three hits, and his third hit was a two run single in the ill fated sixth, ill fated for the Marlins. Well, you know what? McLeod came into this game hitting 143. He came into this game a 195 lifetime hitter against the Marlins in over 115 at bats. But that's not been the case tonight. McLeod running up to bunt. Count out three and one. And the fear of losing Nate McLeod, he has good speed if he should reach base. Strike. McLeod was ready to jettison the bat and trot to first. And it was a strike. And it's in. And McLeod is aboard. And Scott Hairston will come up to face Dunn. We get back into the emails and the tweets. Jack wants to know did uh, Craig do something wrong in the Marlins dugout? To be banned from reporting on what happened to Alvarez. Actually, no. If you were with us, Alvarez came off the field smiling and then just essentially disappeared into the runway. There was no talk about it. And Craig is not able to uh, walk into the dugout and ask anyone a question. He cannot do that. He and cannot go in the clubhouse. And as, and as Craig reported, there was uh, no sign of any pain, no sign of. Any concern? It was just uh, Alvarez exited, and the next thing you know, Chris Hatcher was warming up. McLeod is running. Pitch is high. Sokolamak is throw. Not in time. And the Nationals have the go-ahead run in scoring position. Well, and the other part of that equation is that McLeod drew a walk, and now Mike Dunn has fallen behind 3-0 and to Hairston. He got a good jump. It was a pretty good pitch to throw on, but you could see McLeod clearly beat that. And we pointed that out at the beginning, the fear of McLeod getting off base because he can run. And a strike. Nationals closer, Rafael Soriano is up and loosening. Hairston, the burly right handed bat, his brother just retired. Uh, doing some broadcasting work. Yeah, working out in LA with the uh, with the Dodgers. Of course, Scott, part of a third generation big league family. His father, Jerry Hairston Sr., his grandfather. Played a year in the big leagues after a long and successful career in the Negro Leagues. And Dunn loses him.
in Washington D.C. tonight the Marlins bullpen is buckling. Henderson Alvarez was removed after five innings with a four nothing lead for precautionary reason. He had stiffness in his right elbow. Craig Minervini, Preston Wilson and Tommy Hutton Rich Waltz with you. Rain is looming. A hot and humid day has grown almost brisk here in D.C. Chuck Hernandez is out to talk to Dunn. There aren't a whole lot of options in that bullpen right now. Mike Redmond brought in Chris Hatcher and Dan Jennings to try to get through the sixth. And the Nationals got three runs. A.J. Ramos got the seventh. He gave up a homer to Wilson Ramos. Mike Dunn here in the eighth. Miami has been thin as far as uh, middle relief throughout the year. And it's really showing up here tonight. Well, Alvarez in his five innings didn't walk the batter. Hatcher walked one, Jennings one, Ramos one, and Dunn two. So that's five walks. You know Span's going to be bunning, so the infield will have to play according. And the Marlins have not played catch very well here tonight. One of the runs in that sixth inning scored on a ground ball to Garrett Jones, who threw wildly behind Jennings covering first in what should have been the third out of the inning. It resulted in the third run of the inning for the Nationals. Well, there's Henderson Alvarez back on the bench. First and second span squares drops the bunt down foul be real curious to find out after the game rich if if it was something with the uh, Henderson that was troubling him before the game even started or if it was something that just uh, cropped up at the last minute that last inning he pitched well after span you got Rendon and then Worth. nobody loosening in Miami's bullpen and we pointed out last time for Rendon the way he's hit left handers this year. And we know how Jason Worth hits. Essentially, the Marlins have Caminero, who, as we pointed out, has struggled at here and in AAA, and Kevin Slowey down in that pen, aside from Cisha. Done. Fast runner throws it away, backing him up. Nicely was Dietrich. But now the bags are loaded. There's nobody out. And even on a sacrifice bunt, Miami can't get an out. Beautifully executed by Denard Span. That bunt is in a perfect spot. They may give him a hit. He may have beaten that out anyway, and I think they have ruled that a base hit. Because watch the throw, Dunn gets something on the throw, but by the time he got there, Spam was already there. Great job by Dietrich to back up the way he did. And so now Miami, there's a couple things working here. The Marlins have to bring their infield in, and all they have is Dunn a lefty to throw to Rendon, and we showed you the splits. Rendon, a much better hitter against lefties than righties. And he's up here with no room for error for Dunn. Good breaking ball for a strike. And, and if somehow Mike Dunn's able to get Rendon, there's no place to put Worth with the left hand battle of Roach on deck. Oh, one pitch. Ball in the strike. Rendon, good young hitter. He's 24 out of Houston. Baseball America's Player of the Year at Rice University. And the sixth overall pick in 2011. It hits the runner, McLeod, in foul territory. Unfortunate for McLeod, but fortunate he was in foul territory. Now that's why you're always taught when you take that lead, stay in foul territory. Ball hits you, just a foul ball. 
But uh, there was no place for McLeod to go. That ball got him pretty good. The ball was stung by Rendon. Counts one and two. McLeod got a little bit of attention. Four four ball game. Bottom eight. Bags loaded. Nobody out. Nationals threatening as they have been ever since Alvarez left the game. One two pitch. Bases filled with nationals. Cloud Hairston and Span. Two two. Tip off the chest protector of Salta La Macchia. The splits for Rendon. Infield in. Nobody out. Little looper. And it's foul. You got pretty good speed as the trail runner with Span. Actually, very good speed with Span at first. You got Harrison at second. And then McLeod over at third. Yeah, there's good speed out there. And, and also, look at the number of pitches 21 pitches Mike Dunn is thrown here in this inning. Two, two. Popped him up. And it's going to get out of play. Michael wants to know wouldn't this bases loaded situation in the eighth be a time to consider Steve Cisha? You just can't blow them all out and then have nothing to back them up, and there's no guarantee Cisha's going to strike out three guys. Two two. Another pop up, and that's out of play. As we noted, Hatcher, Jennings, Ramos, and now Dunn left in Miami's bullpen. Archimedes, Caminero, Kevin Slurry, and Cishek. So if you brought Cishek in and say he he got out of it, but it took him 25, 30 pitches. Who pitches the night? Fans don't worry about that. Two two coming. Ground ball foul. Now the other option. Almost picked up. Picked up third base coach Bob Hanley. The other option, if this thing gets, if the Marlins are fortunate enough to get to extra innings, if they get out of this inning, the Marlins have an off day, and they've already accelerated the rotation. There's a possibility they could use a starter in this game if it goes into extras. Randy Wolf could be used in a game like this. Right now, a nine pitch at bat. Rondon swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Anthony Rendon strikes out, and so Dunn has one out, and yet another right handed bat to deal with in work. 
Well, it's some good pitching, some good sliders uh, to a guy who we pointed out showed you the splits, how well he's hit left handers this year. There's that tight spin on the slider, and he gets run down to chase it. He kept going in there with that pitch, too. Work and now the infield can back up for a double play ball. The last time the Marlins were here, Archimedes Caminero, or excuse me, Carlos Marmol was on the mound and he gave up this a grand slam to work. It was Caminero the next game that gave up the grand slam to Desmond. 1 0 pitch. Fastball popped him up. It's playable. The wind is swirling. McGee has it and holds it and squeezes it. And Dunn has got two outs. You talk about a, a swing and a shift in momentum. If Mike Dunn can get out of this bases loaded no out situation without allowing a run and he has to get one more out to do it. All of a sudden that momentum shifts over to the Marlins dugout. That would be huge. Well, it's LaRoche now who is two for four. So Dunn gets the right handed bats of Rendon and Worth. Now the lefty LaRoche. Base is still loaded. Breaking ball. Missed someplace. Dunn sort of hesitated. And it was at the knees and had plenty of the plate. Been a rough night for the uh, home plate umpire. a strike. A ball and a strike. And that one was outside. So like I said, it's been a rough night. They're even now. <laughs> one ball, one strike, two outs, bags loaded, 4 4 game. Marlins and Nationals. LaRoche ready. Dunn is ready. And it's two and one. Roach is waiting for a fastball. Dunn hasn't shown him one yet. With runners in scoring position, LaRoche this year. Thirty pitches for Mike Dunn. And he gets the second strike. It's two and two. Ten o'clock in the east. Washington has the bases loaded with two outs. And he gave the Marlins lead four nothing. Henderson Alvarez left with tightness in his elbow after five. The Marlins bullpen wobbled. Good move with uh, Salt the Lamacchia talking to Dunn as uh, Soriano gets ready because, you know, with the count 2 2, we've seen some good sliders. We've seen the fastball. I'm sure they just wanted to get together. Salty wanted to make sure, all right, we feel comfortable with this is what I think you should throw. Let's see what they throw here to Adam LaRoche. LaRoche ready, Dunn ready. 2 2 coming. Breaking ball and stays alive. LaRoche. Just fighting a couple of those pitches off. Another two two. And another foul ball. Well, he's fouled off sliders, fouled off fastball. Well, 
Great beard going for Adam Roach. He's 34 now. Just off the disabled list. Two two. Jam shot pop up and that's out of play. The Braves are losing to the Red Sox four nothing in the eighth inning. You see the Fox tracks that last pitch number seven right on the hands. Well, the next pitch would be number 35 for Mike Dunn. Another 2 2. Ground ball. Lucas has got it at first, and Mike Dunn gets out of the inning. Bases loaded, nobody out. He pitched himself into trouble. He pitches himself out of trouble. And this ball game is going to the ninth. And when they get there, the Marlins are still tied 4 4. is brought to you by AT&T mobilizing your world by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com and by Florida Power and Light. This has been a wild ride here tonight in Washington, D.C. Lincoln Memorial. And of course, this series started on Memorial Day right out last night. And tonight, a 4 0 lead, a 4 4 game now. Rafael Soriano in for the ninth. The Marlins bullpen has been taxed after Henderson Alvarez left after five innings with stiffness in his right elbow. Kevin Slowey in Miami's bullpen. And it looks like Slowey will be thrust into a role that he's certainly not used to, and that's. Working in a tight game in the ninth inning. And yeah, we talk about that at home as the Nationals are doing right here at home in a tie game. You can bring that closer in. Boy, that ball was hit hard by Salty. And LaRoche flips it to Soriano to get the out. The only problem, he hit it to a, a goal glover. And LaRoche made it look pretty easy. Good aggressive swing by Salta Lamacchia, but there's the pick by LaRoche and a perfect feed to another one of those relievers who has terrific numbers in his career 167 ERA against the Marlins. Rafael Soriano. Good fastballs and sliders. Here comes Ozuna now. Ozuna, an RBI single back in the fourth. Miami did all their damage in the fourth. 
A 4 0 lead. The Nationals got three in the sixth. Marlins bullpen at that point was Chris Hatcher with Dan Jennings. A.J. Ramos gave up a home run, a game tying homer to Wilson Ramos in the seventh. Now for the Nationals, Jordan Zimmerman lasted five. Ross Detweiler pitched the sixth. Drew Storr in the seventh. Tyler Clippert, of course, for the eighth. And here is Soriano. Zuda swings and misses. And Soriano has the first two outs here in the ninth. Yeah, the other thing to, to think about when you look back in this ball game, the only scoring for the Marlins was in that one inning. And they put together the four run fourth. They've had base runners, they've had a few opportunities, not a whole lot. So that was really the only, the only shot they put some runs up on the scoreboard was in that fourth inning. At Chavaria, RBI hit in the fourth. The Nationals bullpen since the sixth inning has given up just a couple of base hits between Detweiler, Storm, Clippert, and now Soriano. Bouncer out towards short. Desmond has it and gets the out. And a brief appearance by Soriano in the ninth. Gavin Slowey's coming in for four to the ninth. Bottom of. Now he's all the scoring in that fourth inning. Garrett Jones with a big base hit. How about Marcelo Zuna? He countered one off the glove to second baseman Kevin Francis. Danny Echevarria drops one into right field. Another run came in on the throwing error by Jason Work. The Marlins, just like that, believe it or not, had a 4 0 lead. Nate McLeod, though, banged a base hit, drove in two runs. Here's an error that allowed the third run to score. The throw was wide from Garrett Jones. And then in the seventh inning off A.J. Ramos, Wilson Ramos dropped one into the Marlins bullpen to tie it four to four. And that's how we stand right here. And I, and I said to you between innings, Rich, I don't know. It would be something we'd have to ask Mike Redmond. But if Mike Dunn had had an inning where he didn't throw 35 pitches, 
He may go back out there this year. This is trouble. Stanton picks it up. Ramos is digging for second. Stanton's throw is in time. Out at second base. Giancarlo Stanton on the line. Back to the bag. Wheels and deals and throws him out. That's the second big play by Stanton of the night. Boy, he has made two unbelievable throws in this one tonight. Yes, he'll be, what? He can throw two from right field. Stanton with two beautiful throws. Great job. And an enormous play. There's one out, and here is Desmond. But to finish that thought, because of the double switch, Mike Redmond maybe, and we don't know, but could have used Mike Dunn for another inning had he not had to throw over 35 pitches last night. Well, to get slowly in the ball game, the Marlins have double switched here. Reed Johnson is in left field. And Yelich is in center. There you go. Desmond fouls it at the plate. The one two from Slowey. Fly ball right field. Stanton makes the catch. All right, we're back to the theme of underrated. Preston Wilson's list. How about number two? Outfield footwork. And let's watch John Carlos Stanton with his footwork on this. No nap time for John Carlo on this play. He gets to it. Watch. He turns, plants that back foot. But the whole thing on that play, he's thinking as he's getting to that ball, number one, Ramos doesn't run that well. And he's thinking, I'm going to plant and throw. If he's thinking about trying to get a double, I'm going to nail it. Kevin Franzen rifles one. Reed Johnson picks it up in left field. Well, you know what? If the Marlins can get to the 10th, they will have cleared the best of the Nationals relievers in storing Clifford and Soriano. But slowly, not accustomed to pitching in this spot. You see Jerry Blevins in the bullpen. Slowly still has to get him there. Breaking ball strike and Nate McLeod has been a thorn all night. Miami has not retired McLeod three hits and a walk. So slow he's given up two hits. One ball one strike. We know that many of you are going back and forth between the heat game to check in on this one. Miami and Washington 4 4. Henderson Alvarez, five shutout innings left with elbow tightness. And keep in mind, too, should it get to the 10th inning, Stanton will be the fourth hitter to hit if it gets to him. One one. Right center field. That's going to fall. A base hit. Stanton picks it up. Runner to third. And holding there is Franzen. McLeod is four for four. Well, the, the Nationals have been waiting for somebody to take charge in that left field position. Tyler Moore's got some opportunities. McLeod has been hitting below 200. But McLeod with a four hit night. 
Yeah, he's going to find himself out there a little bit more. And who would it be at home plate but Greg Dobbs? Longtime Marlin. Signed by the Nationals. Went to Triple A, got his stroke back, and has helped Washington in the last week up here against Slowey. Ed Lucas is not holding the runner at first. So McLeod will take second, and he does. And Dobbs hits it high in the air. Lucas makes the catch, and Slowey delivers the game to the 10th. 4-4 still. Things presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. All right, we're opening up the email bag and tweets at Fox Marlins for Twitter. Fox Marlins at gmail.com for emails. Nation's Capital 4-4 game. The Nationals have left 14 runners on. And Greg Dobbs going after the first pitch. What's that fan on the left with the red hat? Ah. Ah. Well, one thing, and you said it, Rich, the Marlins now have gotten through Storm, Clippard, and Soriano. And now it's Gary Blevins. So against Lucas, who's hit lefties well. Blevins misses outside with a fastball. Marlins saw Blevins for an inning, and he was good in the ninth inning on Monday. He struck out Jones and Salt Lamakia. Jones no longer in the ball game. Lucas is at first and he fouls it back. Lucas in the nine spot, so it's Yelich, who's now playing center field, and Dietrich. And if anybody reaches, Stanton is due up fourth in the inning. Lucas fouls it back and out of play. Marlins Live presented by Checkers is coming up. Craig Minervini, Preston Wilson. Latest update on Henderson Alvarez. We will have clubhouse sound from Mike Redman. Braves preview. Boston. Leading Atlanta 4 0 in the ninth inning. Ed Lucas in the right center field. That's a base hit. And his assault on left handed pitching continues. The underrated 
Ed Lucas. There you go. <laughs> that uh, fits right in. Versus left handed pitching, Lucas is now 10 for 17 this year. How about that? Well, let's see what the Marlins can do now with the leadoff man on base. Solid swing. He takes that same approach. You think the same approach against righties, but it's just had tremendous success against left handers going up the middle or in the right center. Now, Yelich has had success against lefties this year. And he takes outside. Yelich against lefties, 340 average. There is a right hander in Washington's bullpen, and you suspect that's for Stanton. Unless they just decided not to pitch to Stanton. And then it would be for McGee. It would be for McGee. <laughs> so Aaron Barrett, he throws hard. We saw him, I think that series, the last time we were here. Pitch misses. When a left hander, especially a young left hander, such as the case of Yelich, has a good eye and is patient, he's usually going to have success against left handed pitching. And that's what we've seen in Christian Yelich. Lucas at first, Blevins. It's 2 1. Yeah, it's a swing and a miss. Lazaro tweets. What do you guys think of Andrew Heaney and when is he going to make his major league debut? Well, some of that may hinge on the, the health of Henderson Alvarez. So that's a, at least a, a week away as far as a decision. The Marlins. Have an off day on Thursday and then the three game weekend series. Miami's uh, rotation adjusted a bit because of the rain out. Kohler, Turner, Evaldi on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Full count. Would you start Ed Lucas? Yes. Put a little something in motion. Put some pressure on the Nationals. Not running. And the pitch is up. And Yelich. Walks. All right, here's the weekend probables coming up. Julio Tehran and Tom Kohler. That's a really good matchup on Friday night. Jacob Turner and Urban Santana. Remember, that's a 4 10 start on Saturday. And Evaldi and Harang meet on Sunday. And then after that series against the Braves. It's uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. It's two games at home Monday and Tuesday night at Marlins Park. Then the Marlins travel to uh, St. Pete to take on the Rays a couple of games there at the Trop. All right, now you've got first and second, and there's nobody out. You've got Dietrich at the plate, and Stanton is on deck. Are you bunting here? Well, we saw Mike Redman do this earlier in the year. And you, you know if you bunt and if he's successful, you're going to lose Stanton. There's the bunt, and it's a good one. The and throw goes to first. So, so Mike Redman, I, I know a lot of us disagreed with it, but right, Mike's explanation was, all right, they're going to walk Stan, set up a double play, pitch to Casey McGee. He feels so good about the way Casey McGee has swung the bat. It loads the bases, and it gives him a guy hitting over 400 at the plate with runners in scoring position. And it won't be Blevins that's facing McGee. We showed you Barrett, the righty in the bullpen. He's ready. McGee is three for four tonight. And I'm sure with that move, most managers, opposing managers, are going to be pleased with it. They'd rather pitch to Casey McGee than to John Carlin. With the bags loaded. Yeah. Well, because you, you also don't know what Dietrich's going to do if he swings away. You, at the same time, I mean, and you're throwing possibilities out on both sides. You're right. I mean, Dietrich could bounce into a double play. Here's Matt Williams. 
coming to make a pitching change. On the other hand, for McGee, he doesn't need a base hit to score the run. He can also score the run with a fly ball. He can score a run with a wild pitch. So that goes to to Redmond's theory. Get the bases loaded. I'll take my chances. Well, he's taking them here tonight in the tenth. Bags loaded in a 4-4 game. With Derek Dietrich, and he did it nicely. And you knew the Nationals would walk Giancarlo Stanton. And what Redmond wants is Casey McGee with the bags loaded. The runners in scoring position. Casey McGee, one of baseball's best. Only Troy Tulowitzki has been better. Boy, it's been a nice night too for Casey McGee. He has three hits. Those coming after in the first inning, he bounced into a double play. So he's come back with three consecutive base hits. Boy, look at the numbers for Barrett. Even the arms that are at the the bottom. Look at the ERA of the Nationals bullpen. Fastballs mid 90s from this guy are really good. Infield's back for two. Stant is not being held at first, and McGee takes a strike. Mid 90s with a good slider, and that was the slider, the first pitch. That's important for Stanton to get as big a lead as he can. Barrett misses away. Important because if Desmond and Franzen are going to try to turn two, and you've got six foot five, 255 coming at you with a head of steam and a jump start, that's a tough turn to make. Slider away and it's two and one. Yeah, you want those middle infielders to know what's coming at him. Good patience by Casey McGee. Base hits his last three at bats. The Marlin at every base, a 4-4 game in the tenth. One out. And the fastball at 95. And the count evens at two and two. And remember, with the the moves that Mike Redman has made, a couple of double switches in this game. Reed Johnson is the batter on deck. Lucas Yelich, Stanton, McGee, breaking ball. McGee just got a piece of it. Like he got a pretty good slider, but with two strikes, he's just trying to see the ball. He knows that Barrett has a good live fastball. Right hander ready. Another 2 2. Another breaking ball, and this one flipped foul and out of play. Jay tweets Rich and Tommy, how big. 
was the backup play by Dietrich on the throw at first. Uh, there are a lot of things that have been big. There have been some bad base running, but there's been some terrific uh, defensive plays. Stan's playing right. Dietrich's backup. Stan's two plays in right. Let's see if he gets another slider, 2 2. Whew. Wow. This was the play with Span bunting. Great bump by Span. And Dietrich was behind the play. That loaded the bases with nobody out, but Dunn got out of the inning, and the game stayed tied at 4 4. And here we are in the 10th. McGee has battled the sliders, and he gets one, and he drills one. Left field deep, over the head of McLeod, off the wall. Lucas will score. Yelich stops there. The Marlins get a run, and that's it. Casey McGee bangs one off the base of the wall. Everybody froze because of the line drive. Lucas had the ability to tag up. And it's a 5 4 ball game. What an at bat by McGee. Casey McGee just continues to dazzle. He's done it all year. A slider from Barrett. Well played by the left fielder, Nate McLeod. And also, Christian Yelich had a pause. I'm still surprised he didn't score, though, on this ball. He had to pause a little bit and then couldn't get it going, and he could only get the third. And Stanton really had his eye on him. He had to make sure he didn't run him over. Now you got to read Johnson up with one out. And Johnson with a chance to add to this lead. He gets a slider and he drills it to right. Back goes Worth. It's over his head. It goes to the track. One run will score. Stanton coming home. McGee held at third. Reed Johnson with a two run double. And Miami has a 7 4 lead. Johnson saw Barrett feed McGee slider after slider after slider. He was looking slider hut and he drilled it. He's one of the most aggressive hitters. This is not a pinch hit situation. He came in at a double switch. But so many times we see him on that first pitch. When he gets his pitch, he is all over it. He's aggressive. And with Worth playing him, I want to say medium right field, he put a charge in this ball and caught it over Worth's head. Stanton picks it up right away. So he's able to score. So a huge base hit. The Marlins given the Nationals a little of their remedy that they've gotten over the years. And again, the, the topsy-turvy nature of this game. The Marlins had a 4-0 lead. Jason Worth of the Nationals got to the Marlins pen because Alvarez missed the sixth with a tight elbow. Steve Ciszek in the bullpen getting ready. And they will walk Salta La Macchia intentionally. The Nationals came roaring back against the Marlins pen. A strapped Marlins pen because of Alvarez and the stiff elbow. Boy, this is a crazy game because you, you're you going to look back at this game and there, there have been some lows and, and some extreme highs. Uh, the fact that the bases did get loaded, but the fact that Mike Dunn was able to work out of it. Dunn worked into trouble. Bags were loaded, nobody out. Bottom of the eighth, 4 4 game, and then Dunn got out of it without giving up a run. And then Kevin Slowey pitches the ninth. He gives up three hits, but no runs in the ninth. Yelich running into an out. Stanton running over a base runner, but making two great plays from the outfield. You saw the Dietrich play where he backed up the span bunt. And now Solano comes up. With a chance to add to this lead, the infield is halfway after the intentional walk. Solano has looked very rusty at the plate. And he, rightfully so. He just hasn't had many consistent opportunities at all. The other big decision in this inning, the decision to have Dietrich sacrifice knowing that that Matt Williams would walk Stanton intentionally, but we've seen Mike Redmond do that a couple of times, and in this inning, it has paid off. Well, in some of the other decisions, the Ed Lucas double switch, 
He started it with a base hit. Reed Johnson coming in. Two run double. Big double. You know, a lot of managers go by the book by bunting. Solano lines it foul. With Stanton in that inning, the book is almost don't bunt because of Stan. So Red, in essence, by bunting is going against what many people would feel would be a slam dunk in terms of of strategy. But as we've noted, they he, haven't seen Casey McGee hit all year either. He, he wanted McGee <laughs> up there with the bags loaded. He said that last month. He's been consistent with it. And a liner in the right field. Solano drives in McGee. Johnson is held. And Miami's lead is eight to four. And the gates burst wide open here in D.C. Uh, what a what a great job by Donovan Solano. You talked about the rust. He hasn't played a lot. Hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities. Comes through with a big base hit there. So another four run inning. Stays back. Drives it into right field. Finds that hole between first and second. Here is Echeverria. Who is the ninth man to come to the plate. Well, you see the Marlins plan, the game plan, is to get through Storin, Clifford, and Soriano. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? We talked about that. The Nationals had the decided advantage in relievers. Matt Williams had his A team ready to go. And if you've ever watched the Marlins and the Nationals play, you know that Storin, Clifford, and Soriano are kryptonite to Miami hitters. But once the Marlins got past them, they have burst out with four runs here in the tenth. Aaron Barrett has taken the brunt of the damage here. And still just one out. And still the bags are loaded. Yeah, three of the runs charged the Blevins, though, in this inning. So he's taking a pretty good hit, too. Johnson, Salta, Lamacchia, Solano. In the air, down the line, and it falls foul. Just foul. This is a challengeable call. Fair foul in the outfield is challengeable. Let's take a look at it. In slow motion. Oof. From that angle. From that angle it's tough to tell. Marlins can use a challenge here. Although. Mike Redmond and Rob Leary. Well, you got a go, better had a better angle. Yeah and you got to go off Perry Hill at first base coaching there and even. Even uh, Echeverria, who hit the ball. Strike three call. From that angle that we saw, that was inconclusive. This angle, man, it looks like a foul ball. Yeah, I think if, if you're the hitter, you're running up the line, you have a good view. Etch didn't say much. And also, Perry Hill, over at first base coaching, he would have a pretty good view, too. So here's Lucas who started it all with a base hit to center. And Barrett misses outside. Four runs here in the 10th. And an 8-4 Miami lead coupled with Boston's win over Atlanta. If the Marlins can get three outs and get out of here with a win. Then that sets up a. <laughs> That sets up quite a weekend series, doesn't it? The Marlins would draw within half a game of first place in the East. And the uh, Braves are 28 and 20, 24. The Marlins would be, if they hang on, be 28 and 25. And Atlanta plays in Boston tomorrow night. That game tonight was in Boston.
Lucas. Barrett drops it, picks it up, and gets the out. But Miami, who got themselves the extra innings by the skin of their teeth, and a big hit from Casey McGee. And a drive from Reed Johnson. And four runs in the 10th. The defense at times has been enormous tonight. How about that once one four three put out and then this play was terrific by John Carlo moving towards center field. He's able to get something on the throw across his body for the double play and double off Ian Desmond. Henderson Alvarez before he had to come out of the game with some elbow stiffness always making good plays. Good pick, takes his time. But then the backup play. Remember that bunt? The throw that was over the head of Jones, but right there backing up was Derek Dietrich. And just like that, the bases remain loaded. Another Stanton play. Plants, throws, great footwork. Preston Wilson will love that one. Two assists tonight from John Carlo. You know what? He hasn't hit a home run, he doesn't have an RBI. But he's had a real impact in this game. The way they pitched to him in walking him, the two assists, and he also had a base hit. Remember, he made that big catch at the wall, too, when the Nationals were threatening at runners on base. And here is Steve Ciszek. Now, I know it's not a, a closed situation. It's 8-4, but the Marlins have run through just about every reliever. And here is Ciszek hoping to shut the door on the Nationals. He's got the top of the order, Span, Rendon, and Worth. And Span lines it foul. The count is one and one. Tommy, there were many Texers that wanted Ciszek in the game in the eighth inning. Yeah, for all of those who wanted him in the sixth, seventh, or eighth inning, you'd be looking at Caminero right now. So I, I feel a lot better looking at Steve Ciszek right here. So there are many times and hey, I'll be the first to admit it that we try to set up things and maybe don't always agree with Mike Redmond but I'll tell you what red has been all over all kinds of moves tonight. In a game where he's been strapped. Yeah. Quite honestly with the short start of Alvarez five scoreless innings stiff elbow. Dietrich. Gathers it, gets the out at first, and Ciszek has an out. And a, a Marlins bullpen that has not been solid to have to go down there in the sixth, then the seventh, then the eighth, end up with slowly pitching the ninth. And here is Ciszek in the tenth. Well, he went in the sixth. The, he brought in Chris Hatcher, and Hatch got the first batter out, but then the Nationals went on to score three runs against him. And, and that's what really uh, changed things. And they were able to tie it 
AJ Ramos gave up the solo home run to Wilson Ramos that tied it at four. This is Rendon. So the Nationals had the bases loaded with no out and didn't score. They got the three hits off Kevin Slowey in the ninth inning and didn't score. Well, the Nationals have left what 14 runners on. Fourteen. The Marlins tonight with runners in scoring position are seven for thirteen. Well, Casey McGee's got a couple of those hits with runners in scoring position. And the Nationals, on the other hand, two for eleven. Think about McGee. He's four for five. And the furthest ball he hit ended up being a single because of the he hit it so hard everybody had to freeze. Into center field. Rendon has a base hit. Case McGee has his average up to 299 with his four hit game. Now it's worth. Then you've got LaRoche. Worth a one for five night. Worth was a big out for Mike Dunn in the eighth. Dunn had the bags loaded in a 4 4 game and nobody out. And he had probably the three best hitters in the Nationals lineup all lined up. He struck out Rendon. He got Worth the pop out. And then LaRoche to bounce out. Ball and a strike. Another strike. I tell you what, Richards, games such as this, games like this ha have endeared the Marlins to a lot of fans. They, they've just continued to press forward. Worth knocks it into right center field. Base hit. Stanton picks it up. Worth will hold at first at the corners. Here comes LaRoche. Well, you give credit to the Nationals. They're not going to roll over either. Had some tough hitters to deal with, and Rendon and Worth have hit the ball well into right field. Atlanta has lost tonight to Boston 4 0. Cishek, a strike. 0 1 1. LaRoche, a dangerous hitter. Six home runs, six doubles. Has been injured and on the disabled list. It's game number 35 for LaRoche. Game number 52 for the Nationals. The Nationals have dropped five of six. I and mean, the Marlins would love to make it six of seven. LaRoche. Swings, misses, and thankfully misses his first base coach, Tony Tarasco. You know, the Nationals have done some hitting tonight with their 15 base hits, but their batting average coming into tonight is last in the major leagues, and their on base percentage is second to last. Certainly a lot of that. Bryce Harper out. He's on the DL. Ryan Zimmerman on the DL. Oh, 
Counts one and two. Cishek has it out. Nationals have two runners on. Breaking ball liner Stanton makes the catch. A run will score. It's 8 5. Two outs. And the tying run is still a hitter away. Here's Ramos. Ramos hit a big home run against AJ Ramos that tied the game. I just felt some raindrops. <laughs> get this out. Let's the, get out of here. That would be the ultimate <laughs> cruelty, wouldn't it? <laughs> Here's the 0 1. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 2. Get this out. Let us get out of here. Head back to Miami. And get in about 5 in the morning. But you know what? <laughs> That's all right. It'll be worth it. Cishek is a strike away from nailing down what would be a dramatic win for Miami. And he gets a ball game. How about this win? The Marlins, their bullpen strapped on the ropes in the eighth and in the ninth, survived to get to the tenth, put four runs on the board. Casey McGee has four hits. Some big defensive plays by Giancarlo Stanton and the Marlins walk out of here a half game out of first place in the National League East. What a win. They sweep the series. They take two from the Nationals. 8-5 in D.C. tonight.